Hey, Aries. So we're going to start with you. You guys are opposing this eclipse energy. So obviously, as an Aries in the in the first house here, you're going to have that Libra energy seven houses away from you. So if you're an Aquarius, uh, an Aries rising, rather, this is going to be in your seventh house. Regardless of where your Aries energy is, you might be an Aries sun in the fourth house. You might be, you know, which will make you a Capricorn rising, or you may you may have uh, you be watching this for your Aries moon. Wherever it is, the 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 eclipse is happening seven houses away from you, and it is in direct opposition to you. So I do want to say this: any sense of desire or feeling the, the overwhelming need to prove yourself this month. I'm going to say this month, it's, I mean, it's going to be very highlighted, obviously, around the eclipse, but it's going to be rolling out, you know, obviously into the next several months. So any need to really prove yourself, um, go against somebody, you know, anything like that, it's going to, it's not going to go well for you right now. Okay. So you want to try to avoid that, you know, especially around the eclipse. So the eclipse is the 25th. I always want to say five days before, five days after. And the, the a really good way to, to remedy this desire or to not get in your own way with this, with, with this particular emotion, because it is going to be an emotion because it's working with the eclipse. So the moon is very involved in this. Um, is by hanging with people who don't zap your energy, who are in that, like, you know, as the saying goes, energy vampires or people who are going to be maybe trying to use you for your connections, use you for what you could bring to the table, use you in any sort of way. Um, what I do like about this, though, is that you're going to be able to there is going to be an, you're going to be able to sense something. Your senses are going to be very highlighted right now. Um, but you have to be careful of someone trying to deceive you or, or, you know, again, are they using you for your connections, your talents, um, whatever it is in order to, to, to make themselves, um, position themselves better in order to get ahead in a situation. So obviously we're talking about manipulation, potential gaslighting, um, any sort of like deflection. So it could be a little bit of a tricky energy around those eclipse days, right? So because it is opposing you here. And I just want you to take a look, my friends, at everything that is going on in your first house. So you might see some unfamiliar glyphs in here. So let's kind of break it through. First of all, that Libra energy is the full moon lunar eclipse uh, on the 25th is going to be happening for you. It's, it's going to be happening at 3 a.m. Um, I moved it ahead a little bit just so that I could put that Aries energy in the first house, um, easier for the read. It doesn't change the message, but it's working with the nodes guys, right? I mean, it's working with the North and South node. So obviously the Libra side is going to be working with the South node, which is about excretion and needing to release something in that Libra energy. So it could be a marriage, a relationship, a boss, bosses, um, making the decision to sue someone, um, uh, re realizing that you have to change the way in which you do business. You know, you present your face in business, right? Um, something like that can certainly be happening here, but the nodes are very involved. This is a very, very destiny-driven, very karmic um, uh, eclipse that we're having here. So, you know, the first first thing we say with, with this kind of eclipse is you might be getting news coming in. And this news could certainly become, especially because Mercury is very involved in it. Um, so you could be getting some news. Now, because Mercury is in your first house, this message could be coming from yourself, where this is going to come as a wake-up call, a realization, some sort of pivotal epiphany can certainly be hitting the, your home front. Remember, guys, the first house energy, it rules your day-to-day -day path. It's it's the path that you have to walk to get to your sun sign. It's the path that you have to walk to get to your, your soul desire, right? That long-term energy. It is the day-to-day -day practical going-ons, right, that, that you need to 
follow through with in order to get to where it is that you want to go. Now, this eclipse can be making you realize like, wow, hold on. I think I need to, you know, really address this situation in my marriage or really address the situation having to do with my boss because you're getting very serious here about your path and where it is that you're going. And there's something that's going on in your energy right now surrounding you that you're not totally trusting. Now, I want to speak about a couple of other different energies that are indicated in here. So let's look at uh, Eris. So Eris is a dwarf planet. It entered Aries a long time ago. This is a very long um, transit energy. It entered Aries in 1923. It's going to be in there, I think, until 2048. I might be wrong. I have to check. Uh, the 26 or 28, one of those, but, but who cares, right? I mean, that's far away before um enters into Taurus but what's interest what's important to understand here is she is all about this idea of adversity and issues of qu quarreling and rivals and revenge and jealousy right and so these energies could be coming up they can be this realization where you're feeling pretty um, bitter or revengeful about a particular situation, even if that's not normally your default energy, just feeling like something is not right and you're not comfortable with it. Do you understand? And so what I like about this though, is that this can bring about a resourcefulness and a desire to work towards some sort of self-improvement um, that, that can be very highlighted as a result of this eclipse, where it's the kind of thing where you're putting yourself first, not in a selfish way, but in a self-actualizing way, in a, in a self-respectful way, saying, you know what, I don't want to do this anymore. I'm not okay with the way this has been rolling out. I'm really wanting to sort of put your foot down in that space. Now, it's also working with Vulcan. Now, Vul Vulcan is in it in Aries, it's retrograde here. So, and again, obviously this is opposing this full moon energy. So Vulcan represents the power to smash or break down things down into like a crystallized matter and form, like boom, right? Kind of like a tower energy, right? And it's interesting that it would be in Aries. Aries is ruled by Mars and Mars actually represents the tower card in astrology, right? So this is all about the breaking things down in order to pave way for like the fusion of something new, like a new situation. So this could be this realization, I want to improve my marriage. I don't want the same old. I want to improve my work experience. I want to improve on how it is that I deliver my deliverables when it comes to my work, right? Again, because that seventh house is very connected to people who you, you serve, not who serve you, but who you serve in, in your business. So these are the different ways that it can manifest in your chart. Very important though, for you guys to lead from your heart and not your head. I can't say this strongly enough, seriously. Okay. Um, you don't want to be overzealous. You don't want to be at, you know, anything like that. Um, and it's a very speculative kind of thing that's going to be highlighted here. Like, I'm really not sure how I feel about this, but I know that I want new. I know that I want different. So understand this is a deep energy. And so it's it's coming, it's going to be, it's coming up for a reason though, is why I'm saying it. If you're feeling that, grab it and explore it right? Don't try to squish it down and just be like, oh, I'm just feeling emotional right now, whatever the, whatever the case. Now we're also working with, um, what else are we doing here? Part of fortune is in Libra. So it's opposing. So that's something that's going to be going on, um, on the day of the eclipse. And this represents your opportunity for spiritual integration. So take everything that I'm saying and sort of bring it cohesively together. It, it really does point to your ability to experience joy. And it's the kind of joy that comes from the union of energy. So the union of a soulful energy having to do with a marriage or a serious partnership or, or wanting to feel more connected to your work, wanting to feel more connected to your boss. What I like about this and 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 why I like that it's um that it's involved in this eclipse is because yes, I'm saying that you're gonna have to sort of step back and say, okay, you know. I'm feeling this negative way. I know something needs to change, but it's what you're wanting to do that for a very part of fortune reason, right? Because you want to experience your joy. You want to experience your happiness here, right? And you love the idea, at least the idea of 
carving a new path in your life right now, but reckon, but you're not blind to the fact that some things need addressing. Okay. Um, now this Libra eclipse is going to square the following energies, cancer, cancer energies. We have Kronos, we have Australia and we have Hades. Hades is sandwiched between Australia and Kronos. And let's talk about this. Okay. So it's in the fourth house. Fourth house has to do with your home, your living environment, very connected to parenting, very connected to um, first family energies, very connected to, if none of those things are a thing right now, um, really looking at your ability to feel emotionally stable. Now, with that Kronos energy in Cancer, Kronos in Cancer is retrograde right now. So um, this is all about like authority, leadership, mastery. It's very connected to bureaucracy, having differing opinions. And the thing is with when it's retrograde, you may be having a hard time actually expressing yourself effectively, or you may be dealing with challenging energies where you're dealing with difficulties when it comes to bureaucracies on the home front or differing opinions on the home front or feeling like you're not on the same page with somebody on the home front. Now let's go to Australia and then we'll talk about Hades is in the middle. Australia and in, in Cancer is representing this inability to let go. That's what Australia represents, right? It, it It's very connected to um, blockages that stop us from seeing that something is over, that something is finished. There could It could be very connected to... Um, if you're feeling anxiety, if you're feeling depressed about something here. Now, again, because it's in the sign of cancer in the fourth house, it can be connected to feeling like that about your home environment, having to do with your relationship on the home front, just your general experience within within the home front, some sort of general experience having to do with your children or the idea of children, um, your emotional stability, whatever it is. It's, it's this idea of dealing with the bureaucracy, yet not being able to let go of something. And then Hades is in the middle, which is all about feeling this energy of like suffering and loneliness. And it could be a little depressing but because you're feeling like something is deteriorating. So it could be you feel like in the fourth house, maybe you have empty nest syndrome. Maybe your children are moving out. Maybe a spouse is, you guys are ending a marriage and it's, it's, um, someone is moving out, or maybe you feel like you are slowly, but surely dying just a little bit more each day in that particular situation that you're staying in because of emotional security. Now, it could be some sort of situation having to do, it because it's very connected to this idea of deterioration. Um, some of you may be realizing, suddenly realizing, it's suddenly hitting you that your parents are getting older, right? Depends on what age and stage you're at. Um, some of you may be realizing that um, your children are wasting their life away or your children are making really poor decisions. And again, this is a very internal energy, but the eclipse is going to be bringing this up because it's squaring it. And the square is very connected to this idea of, wow, this feels uncomfortable. Let me unpack this and see what power I have to make changes or not, because this does need to be addressed. So I hope that makes sense there as far as, as those energies go. Now, I also want to mention two more things. I want to mention Sedna. Sedna is at 29 degrees in Taurus in your second house. So Taurus, this eclipse is going to make you really want to fight against this. I could tell you that because Sedna is very connected to feeling powerless. And when we feel powerless in the second house in Taurus, you can feel very powerless when it comes to your finances, when it comes to feeling really confident about pushing yourself forward and feeling very confident that you could be, be uh, very independent and very stable all on your own without another energy. Um, but she also does indicate where you can overcome these feelings and and how this eclipse can, and, and this is what I wish for you, is to offer you um, some different choices on, even if they may seem a little daunting to you initially, but some different choices to be able to increase your money, to be able to increase your stability. And the end of March is the best time to do this Aries. I'm telling you the end of March is amazing for money for all of the signs, right? But I want to be very clear here. It's not a good time to spend on junk, right? So expendable income should be curbed. Like 
uh, just going and buying some cute clothes, stuff for the house that you don't really need, uh, pu putting money into um, just like expensive dinners, vacations that aren't really going to add value to your bottom line. This is a good energy to invest financially in some sort of business, the stock market, save money, um, you know, look for bargains, really good energy there. Also an amazing time to invest in yourself. This is such a good energy to invest in yourself right now. So if you've been wanting to go to therapy, go to the gym, get that self-help book, take that webinar, that seminar, whatever it is, it's such a good energy to figure out where can you make yourself an even better version of yourself. Now, again, we do have this idea of um, this need to break out of something and into something new. Now, at the same time, and this is the last thing that I want to note, at the end of the month, um, you see we have, where's our Saggy energy here? We have Pallas, right? So Pallas Athena is in Sagittarius. On the 29th, she's going to be going into retrograde in the sign of Sagittarius, um, and that energy is going to be um, my notes. I don't want to forget anything. Um, things are coming back from the past, but there was something else that I wanted to say. Um, anyway, it'll come to me if, if it was that important, it'll come to me, but doing so something from the past doings from the past circumstances from the past projects from the past people from the past memories from the past um are going to be are going to be hitting you now it's in for you guys it's in the ninth house so this could be um you know certainly maybe going back to an old belief system, an old religion that you once followed, returning to an old way of thinking regarding politics or society, um, returning to school is an obvious one, going back for higher education, higher mindedness, going to um, going back to study something, even if it's just in a webinar, seminar type of format. This is this now. This could also indicate something coming back from the past that kind of rolls back around in the realm of legalities, local governance, anything having to do with a lawyer, um, anything having to do anything like that. So something coming around in that way. So you're getting some sort of notification. That would be towards the end of the month. I mean, it's not until um, the very end of the month, which is. Um, yeah, like the 29th, the 29th is, yeah, Pals goes retrograde um, in, in Sag. And it's really like asking yourself what is coming up in that area and what needs to be looked at. You know, for some of you, it's just going to be like your belief system because you're changing, obviously. You have all of these energies going on in your sign. So this, those are just some things to think about. You know, again, with the eclipse itself, though, news coming in or epiphany coming in, and I'm not going to label it good, bad, or indifferent. There's just going to be some sort of news that you're going to have to navigate. And remember, guys, these can happen five days before, five days after, and it will end up ultimately, and it, it's something happens where there's some sort of seed that's going to be rolling out over the course of the next six months. So I hope that was helpful for you in some way. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Sure. So let's talk about this Libra um, full moon, lunar eclipse. For you guys, it's going to be happening in your sixth house. But I do want to discuss a couple of energies where I'm um, leading up to that. As I mentioned in the astrology, the, on the 19th, the sun moves into Aries. And then on the 22nd, Mars goes in, Mars when it, uh, is going into Pisces. So it's definitely this energy like, what am I doing? Where am I going in my life? You guys have that energy in your 12th house, which is behind the scenes. So it's it's in the in the part of your chart where we do a lot of planning, a lot of thinking. It's very connected to the subconscious, but it's very easy for us to just be like, I don't want to deal with this now kind of thing, right? And you want to make sure that you're not doing that, that you're not losing yourself in any sort of way um, and avoiding some any sort of challenges. Because I do want to say, 
what's going to be very important for you for this particular eclipse and for all of us again it always is about protecting our energy but it's about boundaries for you guys right i mean really um establishing boundaries not only with other people but also with yourself really important to sit back and really look at in a very honest way your habits and your beliefs in your own life that could be equally as challenging for you to navigate and equally as toxic as toxic people and situations. So really looking at the self-narrative, your self-talk, what are you saying about yourself to yourself? It's a time to call out imposter syndrome, really embrace your abilities, your talents, and what it is that you bring to the table. Okay, this is so very important for you guys to do this right now. So that's the energy coming into um, into this eclipse. It's almost a disorienting kind of energy. We're confused. We're supposed to be confused. You know, don't be confused about why you are confused. This is just all part of the energetic steps that are taking us to the next point right? Things need to be messy and confusing before they could be clear, Before, right? We have to understand these things. But for you guys, it's very about good boundaries with yourself, right? So don't allow any sort of escapist tendencies. Don't allow any sort of, um, you know, ig ignoring the reality of things, anything like that. Don't mess with people who are looking to mess with your energy. Stay away. If you can, you know, honestly, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a big fan in the middle of this month, towards the end of the month, minimal socializing for all of the signs, <laughs> to be honest with you. If, you know, we're not going to put ourselves in caves, but it's just that the energy, energy is going to be heightened. It just is. It just is. Okay. So let's talk about that full moon lunar eclipse is going to be again happening at 3 a.m. on the 25th in your sixth house, okay? It is going to be working with the north and south nodes of the moon. That south node in Libra is very connected to, you know, for you guys, because it's happening in your sixth house, you might be letting go of work, letting go of healthy, um, unhealthy habits, um, you know, really looking at your health differently and, and how it is that you maintain it. Um, there could be reevaluating your daily responsibilities and how it is that you run your life on the daily, looking at uh, the, your daily connection to your significant other. How well are you guys working your life together? You know, does something need to be adjusted there? How well are you connecting with your boss or bosses? How well are you connecting with the idea of, um, you know, how it is that you're servicing people in your industry? right? How you're delivering your, your deliverables, right? So to speak. And does anything need to be adjusted there? So obviously it is opposing all of these Aries energies in the 12th house. And you see there's a lot going on there, right? It's not only that sun energy, we have Vulcan, we have the North Node, we have Chiron, we have Mercury. So we have a lot. So let's break these down here having to do with, let's start with Aries first here. Is it 24 degrees? Um, and she is very connected to this idea of adversities and quarreling and rivals and revenge and jealousy. So you can silently behind the scenes either be experiencing this energy towards someone in the workplace, towards someone who's in your day-to-day, -day, or somebody could be feeling this for you and you're suddenly realizing that, hey, I have some open enemies here. I have some people who, as it turns out, I really shouldn't be trusting the way that I am. Now, what I do like about this is that the eclipse could sort of kick something into gear that ends up inciting a sense of resourcefulness within you and this desire to really work towards self-improvement. Self um, that could be highlighted. Now, because that's going to be, that's in the 12th house, some of you may be really turning to tarot or the occult sciences as a method of self-improvement, spirituality. You might be really connected to prayer right now, meditation, getting a lot out of Reiki, crystals, anything like that, or just praying, whatever your religion is, just praying and feeling very connected to spirit is the way to go. And you want to connect to spirit and not the bottle. You want to connect to spirit and not a pill. 
anything like that. You just really do want to be mindful of that in this energy, guys, okay? Now, we also have Vulcan and Aries. Again, Vulcan is uh, at 12 degrees retrograde, right? So um, this is all about you know, feeling the power that you need to just sort of smash something and break it down into such a crystallized matter and form so that it could be fused into something brand new for you, right? And so it really is about pulling something down and then creating something brand new. Now it is retrograde and it's in the house of the hidden. So this can be tricky because this is, you could be feeling this challenge in being able to manifest what it is that you want because you're not feeling very confident about yourself. It's not that you don't have the desire for new. You're just completely right now temporarily cloaked as to how it is that you're supposed to manifest. Sit with the discomfort. And I hear you. I hear you. I know your is in your sign. You're like, sit with it, Jackie. I've been sitting with that bitch for two years already. <laughs> I understand. I do. I get it. This is different though. And you're going to feel that it's different. It's because there's a sense of you're getting the idea now. You're sensing something else. You're going to be feeling something else. Let yourself feel it. Really lean into any kind of discomfort, right? And, you know, listen, I, I do feel like um, for you guys on this day, um, we're going to be dealing with some energies that are just really going to be prompting lots of change for you, you know? And because it's working with Mercury's in there, right? To what's on your mind, you're really going to be thinking about planning. How can I prep for this change? Oh my gosh, I don't know what to do. And it's that kind of thing. Sit with it. Sit with it for a little bit, okay? Um, now, this eclipse that's happening in your, in your sixth house is going to be squaring your third house, okay? So we have a couple things going on here that I wanted to address. So let's first discuss Kronos. So Kronos is retrograde in Cancer at in in uh at 14 degrees. Um so this is all about like this idea of leadership, authority, mastery, um, difference of opinions, this energy of bureaucracy. Now, what can happen a lot when we have it in the sign of cancer in the third house is you can this could be an argumentative energy. Um, when it comes to things going on around the home, when it comes to your emotional security, this could be connected to family, could be to connected, to connected to a significant other, or it could just be you needing to deal with some sort of bureaucratic nonsense, red tape stuff that has to do with, and this is very specific and not apply to all of you, but having to do with your living arrangements. So some of you may be, I don't know, like, um, needing to deal with some sort of bureaucratic nonsense having to do with your neighborhood or bureaucratic nonsense when it comes to waiting for some sort of um, uh, opportunity for a home to come in. So maybe you're on a list or somewhere, or maybe you're waiting for some sort of mortgage approval or you're waiting for some sort of paperwork to come in, but it's stressing you out, right? This, this is the kind of thing where it could, it could certainly kind of stress you out. Now, we have Estrella in there. I'm just going to skip over Hades for a minute. So Estrella is, and again, because this is retrograde, um, you could be very, you could be dealing with a lot of confliction within yourself. Now, Another way that that could show up before I move on this Kronos retrograde in the fourth house is that you are your own bureaucratic nightmare. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like you get in your own way. Your self-talk is getting in your own way. So going back to the beginning of your section, yes, we have to be very careful of negative self-talk. Now, going on to Estrella here, this is the inability to let go. Um, it's blockages that stop you from seeing when something is over, when it's finished, when it's time to start something new. And with Hades in the middle, Hades is very connected to this idea of feeling depressed, feeling this idea of suffering and strife, right? So with that third house energy, there could be some sort of um, blockages and challenges because of some sort of um, in inability to either master something or an inability to agree 
right? No, this could be connected to siblings, your neighborhood, your neighbors, where it is that you live. It could just be your general communication skills, just feeling like you're out of sync with people. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, this is where you really need to exercise those healthy boundaries because of those energies, right? Um, now, we do have Sedna in your sign of 29 degrees. So whenever anything is at the 29th anoretic degree in any sort of sign, it's that shadow manifestation of that sign. So the shadow manifestation of your energy, Taurus, could be very um, stubborn. It could be very stuck, um, you know, needing something a certain way, fearing, lots of fear around stability, lots of fear about money, lots of fear about where it is that you're going feeling very not very strong about yourself okay so sedna can actually really kick that into gear and why am i bringing this up this is not a negative thing okay this is like you have to look at these things because these things are um are crippling you in a way energetically from being able to move forward in a more productive way and you have the power at your disposal to change the way in which you're viewing things even just ever so slightly so that you feel a lot more empowered as you're moving forward now we do want to mention also that as we move towards the very end of the month on the 29th Pallas Athena is going to be going retrograde in Sagittarius and that Sagittarius is in your eighth house which is all about change and transformation so you do have to expect, ex, um, ex, expect um, things from the past are going to be coming back. Ideas from the past, people from the past, circumstances from the past. And for you in the eighth house, these are circumstances that need to be healed. And this is really about changing your own self-narrative to empower you. It's not to debilitate you. None of these energies should be debilitating for you. It's really looking at what needs going on here. Pa Palace Athea is very connected to wisdom. It's very connected to self-growth. But because she's going retrograde in, on the 29th, it really is about going within and looking at your past in a very healthy minded way and saying my past doesn't have to define my future what do I need to let go of and how can I clean up my self narrative and how can I clean up how I feel about myself and believe it though in a positive manner so that I don't actually draw these energy vampires towards me right and that really is what it's going to be about for you in this eclipse energy my friend so i hope this was helpful i really like this end of the month energy for investing in money investing in yourself not a good time to waste money on stuff you don't need the expensive dinners the vacations the whatevers you know the the oh i i just need to go to home goods or home sense or target for one thing and then you you leave with five bags right how many of us are guilty of that right it's not a good energy to be doing that and right so keep your money close but invest if it's going to grow your money or invest if it's going to grow your sense of self that's where your money should be going the end of this month around this eclipse energy so i hope this was helpful my friends thanks so much for hanging out with me and i will see you next time bye bye yeah i hope you guys are doing great today let's talk about this libra eclipse so first thing i want to talk about first of all you guys are one of the signs that are going to be affected very positively which is a good thing but before i discuss that i want to just kind of backtrack a little bit Back to the 19th, when the sun moved into Aries, and then also the 22nd, Mars moved into Pisces. That Mars into Pisces is a weird energy because it's trying to balance work, play, and rest, work, play, rest, rest, play, work, blah, blah, blah. And it's like not being able to, to balance that out. So going into this eclipse energy, not feeling the most stable. And with that sun in Aries energy, it's like, what am I doing? where am I going? And it's, why am I so confused? Why am I so confused that I'm confused? And it's that kind of thing. So if you're feeling that going in, you're in the right spot. Don't worry about that. When none of us are feeling 100% clear on everything going into this eclipse. Now, the eclipse is going to be happening at 3 a.m. in the sun of Libra in your fifth house of falling in love, love affairs, children, monetizable talents, creative energies, um, vacation, your joy, your happiness, all of that delicious stuff. Now, um, you know, Aries is getting that company of, of Mercury on March 10th and Mercury is going to be there, you know, in that 11th house of goals and gains here. 
friendships, older siblings, daughter-in-law, son-in-law, stepchildren, grandchildren, um, dealing with the masses, you know, anything like that is all that 11th house energy. Um, so Mercury's going to be there for like the next two months. But when we kind of add that together with this uh, lunar eclipse, you're going to be flying. I mean, this is definitely a really good axis to have it, to have the uh, this particular eclipse on. So you want to use this energy to be um, a lot more confident, a lot more bold, self-assured, just confident, a lot more confident in your communication. Um, especially if you, you guys are Gemini's, right? Of course, you guys are the, communi you, the communicators of the Zodiac, but there have been some things going on in your energy, Gem, I know, that's been dinging your self-confidence and your ability to, to not have imposter syndrome or to... Even if you feel, even if you know what you're talking about, still something weird going on there. Well, that's going to lift. So that's going to be good. Um, and it's going to be about harnessing that positive energy, right? From that Libra, um, from that Libra eclipse in the fifth house, that's going to really kind of eradicate any sort of obstacle that's been standing in your way of happiness, especially the things that have been really obvious. Now, I want to be very clear here. This could just certainly be something that's just been lingering, like right here, something on your to-do list that you've been knowing you have to do. And it's just like, I telling yourself you don't have the time or telling yourself that there are a million, 12 reasons why you can't do it. But this eclipse, something is going to change in your energy where you're going to be like, damn it, I'm doing it. I'm going to publish. I'm going to launch. I'm going to go. I'm going to get, I'm going after. That's it. Why not? The calendar is moving forward, not backwards. What do I have to lose? Nothing. Nothing. You have nothing to lose. The worst thing that can happen out of this is you do nothing and then you end up regretting it. Because even if you go after something and you don't knock it out of the park initially, so what? You learned something. Go back to the drawing board, do it again until you perfect it. Don't allow yourself to, to just like kind of get sucked into that typical Geminian energy. Don't allow it, right? Where you're like, okay, I'm bored. And a lot of times you'll say, I'm bored because, oh, I'm not that good at this. So it's going to take me to really like study or practice or do da, 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 da. And I really, oh my gosh, I just don't want to deal with that. So bye, you know, that kind of thing. Uh-uh. This energy is going to be very grounding for you actually. Okay. So I, I, I like this because this is a thing it's working with the South node. So the South node, when it comes in, in, in Libra, when it comes to anything that goes, that has to do with relationships, that where maybe you've been unfair or dealing with unfair energies, things have been a little secretive, things have been a little unbalanced, or um, it could have to do with how you're dealing with the boss or bosses or how how it is that you're, you're dealing with your deliverables in your career, how it is that you're delivering your product, your service, whatever it is, because Libra energy is very connected to those who you service, right? So that eclipse brings something out, brings something in. So obviously some of you might be changing jobs. Some of you may be changing the way in which you work. You might be changing bosses. You may be making big changes in your relationship. Some sort of big, beautiful change could be going on in the life of one of your children. There could be something like that. Okay, especially if there's been some sort of obstacle, this eclipse could come in and smash it, especially with all of these oppositions in Aries. So let's talk about that Aries space. Man, oh man, do we have a lot of a lot of people at that party in your 11th house. So I am going to be talking about dwarf planet, goddesses, some trans-Neptunian asteroids, whatever, in this particular reading. Don't worry if you don't know who these cats are. Don't worry. Just go for the meaning of them. So let's talk about Eris, the dwarf planet. It's 24 degrees in Aries. And He's been in Aries for like forever in our life, right? He went into Aries in 1923. He's not going into Taurus until 2048. So he's in there, but he's being very activated by this particular eclipse and because of other conversations that are going on. So, you know, she really does um, speak to the idea of adversity and issues of quarreling, rivalry, jealousy, bitterness, revenge kind of energy, right? And in that 11th house, you might be dealing 
with, right? So you're here having this happy party, right? In the fifth house. And then opposite, do you have an old sibling who's who's got like a little bit of like a green eyed monster energy going on where you're dealing with jealousy or revenge issues with them, or maybe even dealing with that with friends or people you generally associate with? Watch your back. This is not a bad thing for you, Jim, because you're going to be sensing it. Just know who your people are. Know who you're hanging with. Keep those boundaries up. Watch out. We all have to be watching out for the, uh, the energy vampires this month, for sure. Um, but we have that energy going on as well. Now, we do have it in there with the North Node, which is amazing. It's like, get out of my way. I have things to do. I have people to see. There's going to be a lot of focus there on new and novel. But don't be surprised if you have a couple of naysayers on the sidelines or a couple of things, a couple of people, a couple of little circumstances that might be tripping you up. Now, if it has nothing to do with anyone, remember the 11th house is also, do I have enough money for retirement? OK, so here you have all this beautiful energy going on in the fifth house, and a lot of you are doing it because you want to have more money for the future, because you want to be, be more safe and secure, because you want to manifest something new and novel for yourself. You're so ready. Right. So those motivations, I don't see these as a hindrance for you. I just see them as be mindful. Right. Just be mindful with that Aries energy in the 11th. Um, now, I want to talk about the eclipse squaring the, the sign of cancer. So this is going to be happening three houses away from you, obviously, in your second house of money, sense of self, self-esteem, and foundation. Now, the Kronos in cancer, which is this guy here, he is retrograde. So Kronos represents authority, leadership, mastery, mastery, right? It's also about differencing of opinion, some sort of bureaucracy. And because it's retrograde in the sign of cancer, you may be arguing, arguing about finances with somebody who you live with, or you might be arguing or having some sort of financial challenges because of circumstances that are coming up within your home, having to do with your home, whether it's decorating to beautify, because this is a Venus ruled house or doing something to better your ability to feel a firmer foundation. There can be a lack of agreement, okay, in how this is rolling out. Of course, because it's also opposing the eighth house and that eighth house energy obviously is where Scorpio lives, which is where other, other people's money, how we blend with other people. So some of you may be in that space where you're feeling some discomfort around that. Now, we also have Astraea in there, and Astraea is really very connected to our inability to, of, uh, our inability to let go, right? And it's, um, she really does speak to like blockages that stop, she can stop us from seeing the bigger picture when, when it comes to something being over, something being finished, where recognizing it's time for something new to begin, so, and it's sandwiched between that and then, of course, Hades, which is very connected to like poverty and deterioration, right? And I'm really feeling the deterioration element uh, because of how it's sandwiched between Australia and Kronos, this idea of breaking down. So some of you may be looking at your money being very concerned about your finances right now. You may be very concerned about, am I going to have a strong enough foundation moving forward? It could certainly be that. Um, there could be a lack of agreement if you're dealing with somebody else. But for the most part, I feel like a lot of you are in this space of being concerned about your finances right now. And I do want to say that the end of March is a very, very good time to invest. It's a very good time to put into something that's going to make you money. So it could be if you go back to school and you level yourself up, that will ultimately make you money. Anything that's also investing in yourself. So even if it's not something that's going to make you money directly, but if it's going to build your sense of self and your self-esteem, really beautiful time to do that. Great, great. Not a good time for frivolous spending. So get that out of the way before we get to the end of the month, right? Whatever you need to buy, whatever you need to do, you don't want to do it anyway with Mercury being retrograde and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, also part of um, uh, palace is going to be going retrograde and sad. You don't want to go, you don't want to go on any sort of spending sprees towards the end of the month. You really want to be super mindful of that. Okay. But that's where I feel like for, so if it's not your money, it's certainly going to be your sense of self and your ability to feel really comfortable 
in your home, really comfortable in your home space to feel really, your ability to feel really emotionally secure is just a little challenged at this point in this portal. And I want you to understand it's a temporary portal and it's only because things are shifting and it's only because you're being asked to be responsible in a way that you're not typically used to, you're not typically comfortable with. And this is where lean into the maturity, Gem. Do you know what I'm saying? Ask that Sagittarius energy across the wheel, please grant me some grace and help and give me the energy, Jupiter, Jupiter that opposes you, right? Because Jupiter is the natural ruler of, of, of Sagittarius. Please grant me the grace and the energy to live my truth. Give me what I need to, to, to act accordingly, to level myself up and create a more emotionally sound space for myself in my life, right? So it really is very connected to that. Now, I also want to mention that Sedna is at 29 degrees in Taurus in the, in the um, 12th house. So whenever anything is at 29 degrees, it's the shadow manifestation of that sign shows up. So Taurus shadow manifestation is control and it's almost like a hoarding sensibility. It's like an obsession with money and, and a really very strong understanding that I don't feel good about myself. I do not feel like I'm like, I have my superpowers fine tuned right now. I'm not feeling good. I'm not feeling good. Right. And it's more about being able to feel that sound secure energy. And it's in a weird space, right? So you do that, that part right there. You do want to just make sure that, you know, you don't um, self-sabotage in any any which way. I really don't see that being a thing, but some of you may and ultimately have that experience just because it is within nine degrees of Uranus. Um, but it's more about utilizing and harnessing that energy to help motivate you. To say, you know what, I, I really, I want to go because Zen is very connected to this idea of feeling powerless. However... She also represents the very space where we're able to overcome that powerlessness. And when it's in the 12th house, this could be very connected to the idea of the more you give, the more you get back. Um, it's really working from a place of love from your heart and not your head, if that makes sense. Being very openly loving and very connected and committed to things and to, and to, to other people, um, kindness and and all and uh, uh, being unconditional in your approach to things is really the way to go and manifest the best energy during this portal so don't allow any sort of concerns for your future or any concerns for money create a situation where you're holding so tight to something that you end up breaking it or you know you're 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 holding too tight to money or too tight to to relationships are too tight to things, right? It really is about loosening up. And, and you're only doing that if you find that you're doing that just because you're scared of like what's around the corner, you know, un understandable, but that's just not the good strategy, right? For this month. Last thing I want to mention is that um, Palace Athena going retrograde in your seventh house. And that is really looking at self-awareness and self-growth when it comes to relationships, when it comes to how you connect with bosses, how it comes to also how it is that you service yourself within your business, right? How do you present yourself to your clients? And lots of good, lots of things are going to be coming up from the past, from the past, doings from the past in that seventh house. So for some of you, a relationship could be coming back from the past. An old boss could be calling you out of nowhere. You could be realizing that you want to go back to an old form of employment. Or for a lot of you, it could just be very sort of um, emotional where you're realizing that you're feeling a certain way about something from the past. Or you're going back to an old way of doing something when it comes to the way in which you work. Or there's a return to something that maybe you stepped away from for a while and now you're returning to that arena maybe to work in. Or maybe you're returning to uh, family members or you're returning to old friends. But it's something from the past. But the thing is, you have to look at what's coming up from the past, literal or metaphorical. What do you need to look at? It's coming up for something. And the ultimate intention is to grow you. So that's something that's very important to understand, that whatever's coming back is meant to grow you forward. So those memories, thinking, oh, I'm going to go back to that kind of job, study that thing, call that old friend, connect with that person, whoever it is, it's going to 
it's coming back to move you forward. Okay. I hope that makes sense for you. Um, you know, definitely those at last couple of weeks socialize as little as possible. Um, you know, I, I just recommend that because the energy is going to be very weird and I'm all about protecting our, our energies in these kind of, things, especially energies that are going to pass. You know what I mean? Like, you know, why deal with it if we don't have to? So that's what I have for you, my friends. I hope this was helpful in some way. See you guys next time. Bye-bye. I hope you guys are doing great. So let's talk about this Libra, full moon, moon, or eclipse for you guys. So the eclipse is going to be happening in the fourth house, but I just want to remind you of a couple of energies leading into this. So we have that sun and Aries energy from the 19th, and then on the 22nd, Mars and Pisces, such confusing energies, right? Because that sun and Aries energy, which is in the 10th house, it's like, what am I doing? Am I, you know, what's my purpose? Am I doing the right thing? Feeling this level Low key, maybe not so low key level of confusion. And what am I doing? How am I balancing life out? It was probably very difficult for you to feel grounded and like organized, right? <laughs> Leading into this, right? Especially because that first part of the month really had you wanting to kind of just explore. Very easy if you're sitting at work to like, be on your phone, looking at different YouTube videos, uh, maybe shopping on Amazon, you know what I mean? Like when you're supposed to be doing one thing, it's just like, oh, I'm having a hard time paying attention. By the way, what's life all about? You know, that kind of thing. A very roamy kind of energy, right? Those first two weeks. trying And trying to balance out like, you know, work and then play and then, you know, trying to just balance everything at rest, you know, how to just sort of balance it all out. A very imbalanced, I'm confused about being confused and all of that good stuff. And because it's in the 10th house, it could have had to do with your career, but it also could have had to do with like, what am I doing? Because 10th house is very connected to all long-term, all long-term life goals, right? Some of you might be looking at your marriage, you might be looking at your career, you might be just looking at where it's the highest point in your ha in, in in the chart, and it's also very social. So you might even be looking at who it is that you connect with, right? The people that you've been connecting with, and it's like, do I feel connected to all of the energies in the space that I'm at in my life? And some parts may be a big yes, and others may be a hard no, right? So it you know it depends on what's going on in your your particular birth chart, but um. I do feel like for this particular eclipse, you know, happening in the fourth house, remember it's very connected to this idea of emotional stability and the moon is, is, uh, lives in the fourth house, right? In the, in the chart, because it rules cancer. It's a cancer energy. And you're in there with the South node, which is all about needing to release and let go of. So you are really being called to change your perspectives, your routines, when it comes to your, your foundational energies, right? Um, very important, you know, because you're going to be realizing with this eclipse that there are habits, thoughts, and beliefs about yourself that are actually hindering you. They're crippling you in some sort of way. For some of you, it could be literal. For others of you, it could be metaphorical. And, and whatever it is, though, it's keeping you from what you want. So for example, um, if you've been like feeling this calling to go back to school, but for whatever reason, you keep talking yourself out of it. It's like this crippling self-talk, or you know you want to get out of that unhealthy relationship, or you want to move from that place, or whatever it is. It, it's it, it's these internal conversations that are really your largest, um, I, I want to say enemy, I guess, as 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 far as, you know, it's again, this idea of crippling, because you're, you're meant to be focusing at least after this, once this uh, eclipse rolls out, it should be all about focusing on creating a stable foundation for yourself. But you have to be able to engage in what that actually means for you, like having a very clear sense on what does that mean? Does it mean having a certain type of job, making a certain amount of money, living in a certain type of place, having your relationship status be a certain way, your family situation be a certain way, whatever it is. And then how can you work recursively backwards in order to manifest that and make it happen? Now, this the the eclipse is going to be happening here. Now, as with most eclipses, um, 
you know, obviously something eclipses out, something needs to come in. But because this eclipse is working so tightly with uh, Mercury, it's some sort of information can be coming in. Okay, so you could be get, getting some sort of information coming in from a boss or bosses having to do with a, jo a job, a career situation, having to do with the status of a relationship or something that is very important that's going to be playing out as being important on your path moving forward. Okay, so that's that full moon lunar eclipse is you may receive some sort of unexpected news and it's unexpected because it is an eclipse now. Um it's also going to be quincunxing that uh, um, Saturn in Pisces energy as well, right? Um, so over here in the the ninth house, so that has to do quincunx is a very they're five, it's five houses away. It's very it's uncomfortable and something that needs you need to sit back and so, sort of have some some um, thought put into it, some sort of perspective. Ninth house deals with higher education, higher mindedness, religion, politics, belief system. Now, I do want to say that some of you may be, um, you know, engaged in the in the realm of politics or religion, organized or otherwise, higher education, um, marketing, advertising, launching things, editing, importing, exporting, foreign land, foreign travel, any of those are all ninth house energies. And with Saturn in there, with that, that quincunx, some of you may be realizing, hey, you know what? I might want to change my career and get into more, more spiritual field. Maybe I want to enter into politics. Maybe I want to go back to school. Maybe I want to do a couple of these things at the same time. Maybe I want to live abroad. Maybe I want to just connect with, with ideas and realms outside of my experience altogether where it's so real for you that it's palatable. It's not like a passing whim kind of thing. All right. So I did want to mention that, um, so we have this full moon. It is going to be squaring. Um, well, it's going to be opposing Aries. So why don't we talk about the Aries opposition first? Because look at all of these these mamma jammas in the, the tenth house. Now I know you don't know some of these glyphs. It's totally fine. I'm just listen for the interpretation. So we have Aries as a dwarf planet, and you know she's very connected to adversity and issues having to do with like arguing, rivals, jealousy, revenge. And because it's in that 10th house, you may be feeling this way uh, about somebody at work, or you may be vibing that somebody at work feels this about you, but there can be a tendency towards either one-upmanship energy or feeling like somebody is trying to one-up you. Now, this could be having to do with a colleague because it's 10th house, but it could just as easily, easily be a significant other or somebody who is very important on your path moving forward. Now, it's also working with Vulcan in Aries, which is retrograde at 11 degrees. Um, and this is all about uh, the, like the power to to smash or break down into like a, what I call like a crystallized manner, like really break down the matter and form of something down to nothing. It's like a tower energy here, right? To pave the way for the fusion of something new, right? So it really is this idea about really taking something down so that it could be reformulated, right? Um, and this does call to, you know, I do see for a lot of you, you're, you're recognizing that you need to break something down, something old, in order to forge something new. You know, in that 10th house, very important work. You want to make sure that you're working from your head and not your heart. I'm sorry, your heart and not your head. Opposite. Your heart and not your head. Okay. Um, in this energy. Okay. But let's sort of break it down even a little bit more. It's this idea of recognizing something needs to change where it's got to be either reformed or changed completely. That job, that relationship, that game plan that you were sort of following as far as moving forward. Because you're realizing that if you don't do that, you will end up where you're not meant to be. You're realizing that now. This eclipse is going to seriously highlight this for you, okay? Now, this eclipse is also squaring the sign of cancer in your first house, obviously. So let's talk about Kronos first. So Kronos is, is retrograde of 14 degrees. Um, this represents this idea of authority, leadership, mastery, um, differences, differences of opinion. Um, this is very connected to this idea of bureaucracy. So there could be this challenge between 
Are you feeling challenged with a boss, a significant other, or you could be feeling this just within yourself, meaning um, where you may be having a real, because it's retrograde, you may be having a really hard time being your own leader, being your own master. You may be getting tripped up in your own self-imposed bureaucracy. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do that because of this, this, and this, and creating your own energetic blocks. And, you know, going back to what I said, these crippling uh, thoughts, these crippling beliefs about yourself and about what you're capable of doing really does need to be addressed this month, is this is going to be coming up full throttle. Now, let's talk about Astraea. Astraea is at seven degrees in Cancer. And this is really about this inability to let go. It's all about blockages that stop you from being able to see that something is over, that something is finished. And it's very, you're very ready to for something to be, to be new, to begin new. Now we have sandwiched in there. We have Hades, which is very, I'm understanding Hades with these energies to be very connected to the idea of deterioration, this idea of breakdown, breakdown, breakdown. So it's like, so this idea of your own self-imposed bureaucracy, feeling like something is sort of breaking down in you, realizing that you're having a hard time letting go of something, this needs to be looked at. It's in your first house. This is very connected to negative self-talk. You have to really look at your job. Are you in the right job? Are you in the right relationship? Are you connecting with the right people? Are you delivering your deliverables in your work in the way that's best suited for you? Meaning, maybe it's not about relationship. Maybe it's not about your boss. Maybe it's just about the way in which you deal with your clients, your customers, it's time to change something up. Now, what is the anecdote for that? Well, maybe you have to increase your skill set. Maybe you have to go back for some more education, take a webinar, a seminar. Maybe you have to just meditate a little more intensely on a daily basis just to feel more in touch with yourself so that you're delivering yourself to the people in your life in a more authentic way. But not allowing yourself to scurry and run and run around and hide in your shell and, you know, ignore the elephant in the room and do all of those things. It's not about that. You know, it's about getting very real and very honest with yourself. Now, Sedna is at 29 degrees in the sign of Taurus, which is in your 11th house. 29 anoretic degree is always connected with the negative, sh the shadow manifestation. I'm going to say negative so much, a shadow manifestation of Taurus, which is this idea of control to the point of needing to hoard. And when we're talking about Taurus, it could be money. It could be uh, ideas, beliefs, when it comes to your goals and your gains. So are you holding too steady and too strong to an idea that has reached its expiration date? Now, I've discussed this with you time and time again, Cancer, that Cancer energy, and we all have Cancer somewhere, all of us have it somewhere, whatever your Cancer energy is. There is this idea of always staying in things past their expiration date. I am guilty of the same thing. I have cancer in my seventh house and I always do that. I, I stay, in, well, now I can't count my marriages. I have a good marriage, but I stayed way past the expiration date. My previous marriage, I've stayed way past the expiration date in several of my jobs. Do you know what I mean? And so I get it. I get it. Can't allow it. Not about it. OK, and now it's about changing that narrative up and it's about empowering yourself to be the one to change that narrative. Now, the last thing that I want to I want to mention is that Pallas Athena in, in Sagittarius is going to be going retrograde in your sixth house. So the sixth house is very connected to your daily work environment. It's very connected to colleagues. It's very connected to people who work for you, your health um pets something from the past some doings from the past are going to be coming back this is a very karmic energy so you might be getting a job offer from the past getting in touch with people from the past who you used to work with some sort of health situation could also be coming back around for you to address right now in that sixth house energy i don't see it as a negative thing guys i don't want you to fret about it too much but it does look like something that if it is in the health realm you are going to need some sort of attention to pay, you know, pay to it. Pallas Athena is very wise. She's very positive. When she goes retrograde, though, there are going to be things that are coming up. She's very about 
things coming back, back from the past in order to grow us forward. She's very connected to self-growth, to being the best version of ourselves that we could possibly be, to pushing forward. So do expect that for some of you, you could be hearing from someone from the past and or realizing that you want to go back to doing something that you were doing at some time in the past in an effort to actually push your way forward. So again, because of all of those energies, that Saturn energy in the ninth house, maybe you're going back to school, you're realizing that you are, you're changing your belief system or the, or your approach and how it is that you want to move forward in a way that's going to best sit, uh, situate you moving forward. But it's a period of growth and growth is never comfortable. And this is, you know, as I indicated in the astrology for March, this is the beginning really of that change, right? Um, that we're, we're really going to start, we're, we're really starting to feel it. Even just our energy levels are really kind of weird. Um, but I'm doing this on, today is March 8th. So I'm starting to feel a little more awake. I don't know about you guys, just that sun and air. It's the sun and Aries energy with Mercury, with Vulcan, with it. It's a lot of those energy, a lot. When you have more than several energies in, in a house, that it becomes sort of like overload. And then we're kind of like, wah, wah, wah. You know what I mean? So we do what we have to do, but we feel so much more tired when we do and we don't feel as well rested when we sleep. So that is what I have for you, my friends. I hope this was helpful for you in some way. Thank you so much for hanging out with me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Like this eclipse for you guys, Leo. I really do. What an energy of great healing for our Leo friends is going to be going on here. That desire to have a meaningful and deeply connected relationship brings you to them. It's that desire that brings you to them. This is going to allow you to do a lot of really beautiful soul searching to figure out exactly what you want to do. What do you want from life? What do you want from relationships? What do you want from work? What do you want your day-to-day -to, -day to look like? The energy from this Libra eclipse is going to really bring healing to that deeply held moon. And the eclipse is going to be happening in the third house. Very mental energy there. Very mental. And it's very it's on the, the the axis of negotiating. It's it's their beliefs. There's communicating. There's a beautiful energy to heal some sort of sibling relationship, beautiful energy to heal something, something that's gone on with an old friend. Um there could be a lot of beautiful healing just in really, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't want to even isolate it to them guys, because this could really be to absolutely anybody in your life, really, because of, you know, it's not trining Pluto, but it's trining the house that Pluto is in. So I really want to overspeak and I'm trying not to connect Pluto too much to this particular, I just feel like we have, um, a lot of other energies that I want to get to, to talk about having to do with like, uh, asteroids and dwarf planets and stuff that I, see are really impacting everybody's energies. So let's kind of unpack all of that. Okay. Let's start with what's going to be opposing this Libra energy, which is Aries, right? So you see in your Aries, your ninth house, look at how much is going on there. My goodness, my goodness. Right. So let's talk about Eris. So Eris is a, um, a dwarf planet. Um, she is very connected to this idea of adversity um, issues of quarrels. I know it sounds negative, don't worry, I'm going to bring it back around. But it's the idea of re revenge, jealousy, rivals, rivalry. Ninth house very connected to legal situations. So there could have been some sort of bitterness that needs to be healed at this point when it comes to some sort of legal situation, some sort of, um, you know, and it could have had to do with a sibling, could have had to do with a neighbor, an extended uh, a member of your family. Um, it could There could have been some some sort of like, some sort of situation connected that needs healing, right? And it's it's a pretty overt. And I feel like a lot of you are going to know exactly what I'm talking about now. Because it's in Libra, it could be with a significant other. It could also be with a boss or bosses. Or it could also be um, a big change for you in the way that you actually deliver your work, right? Because that Libra energy as the uh, landlord of the seventh house is not only about marriage, contracts, and partnership, but it's also very connected to how it is that you present yourself and the energies that you give of yourself to people who you service, right? Your patients, your clients, your whatever it is, right? It's that energy that 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 you're putting out there, right? Um so a lot of this could be changed. Remember eclipses eclipse something out to bring something in, but this is very much working with Mercury right now. And it's opposing the house that Mercury lives in. 
So for you guys, there's going to be such an opportunity to negotiate and navigate something towards healing so that you can move past something that's been really challenging. Okay. Now going back to that Aries energy, um, I spoke about the Aries, uh, let's talk about Vulcan. So Vulcan is at 11 degrees retrograde. Now Vulcan does represent this idea of smashing something down to bits down to it's like a crystallized matter and form so that you're able to pave the way for something new to fuse into something new right um so breaking down to rebel but it's retrograde so this means it's something from within you in your own energy leo needs to be broken down so that it could be reformulated as something new. Now in the ninth house, that's a Jupiter ruled energy. It's very connected to your truth, your belief system, your religion, your politics. This is really about taking and life and saying, I, I have, I either want to more deeply solidify my religion, my view, my politics, whatever it is, or get back, get into something that's very connected there. Now, I do want to say that towards the end of the month, I'm going to go off on a little bit of a tangent here. Pallas is in Sagittarius. Sagittarius is also the landlord of the ninth house. So your ninth house is going to be feeling, Pallas is going to be going retrograde on the 29th. And this is very, she's very connected to this idea when she's, she's very wise when she's retrograde. So very connected to this idea of wisdom and and things, goings, goings on from the past, coming back around coming, rising up to the surface that ultimately are going to need to be healed. So there could be circumstances from your childhood that need to be healed. Circumstances from those who, who you shared your childhood with. Circumstances having to do with some sort of creative endeavor, something to do with your children, um, something to do with a relationship. Like something needs to be healed within you. It's got to start from within you. And then the energy is going to sort of exude outwards, right? You can't expect somebody else to change and you to feel healed, right? I hope that makes sense. This really does have to come from dip very deep within you. And this is a very soul shifting energy. And I love it because you guys do have Saturn in the eighth house with Mars. Oh my gosh. Like that's such a good energy to let that stuff go from the past, I really let go of whatever's been holding you back, whatever's been hindering you, which, uh, whatever has had its grip on you from the past that you haven't fully healed. You know what I mean? So I really like that energy for you. Now, let's talk about what's squaring this energy because the sign of cancer is squaring it. Did I talk about part of fortune? No, no, I don't want to talk about part of fortune is, is hanging out with Pluto. It's fine. Um, I'll let that go. So let's talk about the square to cancer. So Libra energy squares cancer energies. So Libra in the third is squaring cancer in the 12th. And so we have in here, Kronos, Australia, and uh, Hygieia are all in there in a square, which is kind of uncomfortable. It's in the house of the hidden house of the subconscious. So this is going to manifest on a very internal level, right? But so as you're going through these changes, and believe me when I tell you they're going to be good, th there's this stuff that's going to be, you're going to be feeling a certain way deep inside, right? Because you're going to be in, having a little bit of a, a tug of war with yourself. Because Kronos in Cancer, this is Kronos, he's retrograde. He's very about authority, leadership, mastery, um, difference of opinion, very connected to the idea of bureaucracy. And in the sign of cancer, it could be the bureaucracy of a home, bureaucracy of a first family situation, something connected to mother. Um, there could be just a lot of like bureaucratic tape on even a very like local level, or, you know, this could even be very within yourself. You know, when we have these for 12, houses, 12, one, two, three, even four, these are very, behind the scenes introspective energy. So when we have any sort of bureaucratic energy, we could be fighting against our own bureaucracy. We could be really fighting against the the the, the laws and that we lay down for ourselves versus what we're feeling that we need to start living right now. 
and trying to figure out the divide between those two, right? But it's got to start from you because it is retrograde, right? And so really getting in touch with where can you master your own energies and where can you break through your own negative self-talk, your own self-imposed bureaucracy, okay? Now we have Australia in Cancer is at seven degrees, and this is representing your inability to let something go. It points to blockages that can stop you from seeing that something's done. It's finished. It's it's time for something new to begin. Um, and it's in and what's in the middle there is Hades. And there is Hades could be connected to suffering, strife, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like with these energies, the word disintegration is what I'm using for this particular portal, right? For these three. So it's about recognizing that you feel like something within you is breaking down, breaking down, right? And it's very connected to this idea of this bureaucracy within yourself and your inability of letting something go. And in that 12th house, straight up, what addiction are you looking at letting go of? What negative self-talk, what self-sabotaging behavior, where are you giving too much of yourself to the point of it being bad for you, Leo? Where are you not being honest and true to yourself at this point? Where are you exercising self-deception in order to make something work? You're not going to be able to run away from that. Do you know, you know what I mean? Right? Um, that's what it is. Now, I want to tell you that you are one of the signs that is definitely experiencing a much better energy. You, Gemini, Aquarius, and Sag are definitely the four signs that are going to be experiencing a much more positive manifestation of this eclipse. But that doesn't mean that these things are not going to be coming up, right? Because the thing is, it's about letting go and really facing some sort of deep, deep wound that's been sort of still being nursed in your energy, it's got to be dealt with. And you have all the energy that you need to actually work that out. So what, whatever with that relationship, self-sabotaging behavior, that family situation, so that whatever it is, it's you have the energy to heal it, but you're going to have to kind of lean into that discomfort. And again, going back to the end of the month, with this, with palace uh, going retrograde in Sag in the fifth house, it's this idea of what's coming up in the area having to do with your early environment, having to do with your children, having to do with a the idea of relationships, the idea of your joy and what matters to you. Even for some of you, even your idea of ego, because it's in that fifth house, which is where you guys actually live in the chart, right? So, you know, where where do you need to have things a certain way and really kind of unpacking that and saying enough for what, you know, maybe I can let that stuff go. Maybe I could just focus on other things. Maybe I can meet myself halfway. Maybe I don't need the things that I thought I needed anymore. Maybe it's time for me to rewrite that, that, that my story moving forward. You know what I mean? Because something's happening as you move forward, guys. Because let's not forget in the background, we have Uranus and Jupiter are speaking to each other here. They're only four degrees away from each other. That is considered a fairly tight conjunction. They're not 100% conjunct, but they are conjunct. They're within four degrees. Anything that's within 10 degrees, we have to pay attention to. So this conversation is getting louder and louder and louder in that 10th house of career, public reputation, standing in the world, and where are you going in your life, right? So this eclipse is very important in that entire narrative because this is going to allow you to move forward in a space of healing and in a space of peace if you allow it. You have to make sure you allow it. And this requires, because of the couple of retrogrades that we have going on, you have to allow the, you know, the discomfort within you, right, in order to manifest something on the outside. Anything else I wanted to say? I just, I did want to mention um, Sedna, 29 degrees in Taurus. So to anything that's at 29 degrees, it's called the anoretic degree. And so the shadow manifestation of that could be coming up. So Taurus obviously is very much about control you know, being like um, obsessed with having a strong foundation to the point of hoarding. So it could be hoarding money, it could be hoarding morals, values, belief systems, re relationships, ho holding things so tight that we will not let it go. And this is where we have to be a little careful, right? Because Sedna is really a place where we can feel powerless, but it's she's also a place where 
we're able to overcome those feelings and recognize that we play the most important and the most crucial, the most crucial role in our ability to feel stable, safe, and secure. So what I like about this anoretic 29th degree is that you're being pushed to say, I am in charge of my own security, my own happiness, my own joy, my path. I can't rely on anybody else. And it's not about oh, I can't rely on them because they're unreliable. It's about, no, I'm actually not going to be happy if I do that. This is about really leaning into what you feel intuitively is really right for you. You know, um, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. It just doesn't because at the end of the day, you know, and this isn't about being selfish or self-involved or anything like that. It's not. Again, it's about exercising extreme extreme love and extreme self-care because this is about bringing yourself the stability that you need, right? So whatever that means and whatever that means that you have to do. So that is what I have for you, my friends. I hope this was helpful in some way. Thanks for hanging with me and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Virgo, I hope you guys are doing great. Let's talk about this Libra eclipse. We have a lot to discuss. Um, but I first want to say, when, I, when I'm looking at the energy for this eclipse, for you guys, I want you to be really careful because it is happening in your second house at 3 a.m. on March 25th here. I want you to be careful of people trying to overshadow you. It's a really good month to join forces with other people for any sort of collaborative energies, particularly on that that second house, eighth house axis. But you have to make sure that you're guarding your energy and yourself from being overshadowed. Um, is it going to be, it might be a little bit hard for you to gain some sort of work-life balance, but I feel like that, you know, that has a lot to do with the sun moving in, into Aries on the 19th, made us all feel like, where am I going? What am I doing? I feel confused. Why am I confused? I'm confused about being confused and I'm tired and I'm having a hard time balancing everything out. I kind of married up Mars and <laughs> Mars going into Pisces in that space where we were sort of like trying to balance like work life play and and it's it's just like this energy of confusion, right? Going into the eclipse, right? Um so everybody's kind of feeling like this, but and this eclipse really encourage you to, encourages you to seriously make that that balance a lot more of a priority so that you don't ultimately end up neglecting yourself, particularly because Pluto just went into your sixth house. So you do want to be careful. You really do want to guard against your health. And like that needs to be your mantra, like watch your health, right? If anything does come up for you. Um, now, the full moon lunar eclipse is happening in your second house of money sense of self, self-esteem, your ability to feel grounded, safe, and secure in your life, right? So uh, something gets eclipsed out for something to get eclipsed in, right? Now it is opposing Aries energy. So this is a Mercury involved eclipse. It's got a lot of involvement with a lot of energies, as you can see in the opposition in the eighth house, which is where Scorpio lives, right? This is about endings and beginnings, change and transformation. So it's opposing the eclipse, right? So there's this energy coming from across the wheel, like it's like time to change. It's time for the, this, this, us to go into this next chapter in our life, right? And this is about, for a lot of you, this could be very, because it's a Mercury, um, it's a mercurial type of eclipse because Mercury is involved. This could be very connected to news. Now, because Mercury is in the eighth house, it could be news having to do with debt, taxes, other people's money, um, the financial uh, finan fi financial agreement or arrangement, whatever outcome on any sort of legally binding situation. You could be finding out the amount of money that you're going to have for retirement because the retirement's also in there is very connected to um, investments. I do want to say the end of the month, very good time for investments, very good time for putting money into anything that's going to ultimately end up generating income for you. So if it doesn't have to do with an actual investment in some sort of some sort or saving in a way where it yields some sort of percentage that's going to pay out, it could be investing in yourself so that you can ultimately end up having a greater skill set to make more money. But it's not a good time to waste money on expensive dinners, on things, on, on frivolous things. It's not a good idea to, to waste it on frivolous things. But anything that's going to better you, 
right? Create an energy where you're bettering yourself, either through more information, more knowledge about yourself, whether it's therapy, self-help strategies, a diet, working out, like money, money would not be wasted if you're joining a new gym or if you're investing in some sort of diet plan or something like that, or some sort of self-help situation, anything like that is, is a good way to go. Okay. Um, but that, that has to do with, um, especially, well, the second half of the month, really, right? But especially as we get towards um, the end of the month. But let's unpack those Aries energies there in that eighth house. So we do have Aries. Aries is at 24 degrees in Aries. I know some of you guys don't know these glyphs. Okay, let's just go for the meaning. <laughs> okay, just go for the meaning. Um, so here, she is the goddess of strife and discord. So when we're de dealing with that in the eighth house, this could be feeling a discordant energy with a significant other. This could be a discordant energy when it comes to finances, um, again, having to do with debt, taxes, other people's money. Um, eighth house also uh, is indicative of moving, right? So there could be some sort of discordant energy surrounding the idea of moving. Um, and there could also be quarrels that end up ensuing, any sort of like rivalrous energy, revenge, jealousy energies of other people. It can be that other people feeling that way about you, you know, that energy can be present, but it could also just be this idea of feeling strife and discordant energies when it comes to finances. Okay. Now this is going to be a thing in this particular energy. Okay. It just is right. So this is just, again, this is about protecting our energies and just understanding. Now it's working with that. It's working with Vulcan, Vulcan and Aries retrograde at 11 degrees. So that's all about Vulcan represents, um, the power and our ability to really like smash and break down a situation down into like a crystallized, matter so that it could be reformulated and fused into something new. So it's the absolute breakdown of something in order to create something new. Now, again, it's Aries, right? So this is about breaking something now down in order for you to have some sort of new path, new perspective, new opportunity. There's some sort of new situation, right? So even though that Eris planet, the, the, um, the, the dwarf planet, Eris can be a little challenging there. We have Vulcan in there, or it's like, this is this has to be broken down. This can't continue anymore. This has to be done. Some of you are moving. Some of you are getting in front of your finances. Some of you are seeking outside help to get to, to deal with your tax situation. Some of you may be getting money from somebody else to help you with a financial situation. Whatever it is, it's going to break down the old in order to bring in something new. So those, those kind of energies, because it's working with the North Node, I don't see this as being a negative thing, but more as like a problem-solving thing. So maybe some of you are actually moving to a new place that's cheaper, that's going to cost you less money, or that's maybe not as fancy, or you're... You're, you're doing your taxes now. A lot of people are doing their taxes now and you're like, there's no way in hell I'm going to be able to pay this. Maybe you're reaching out to an accountant or to some sort of agency or maybe even just the IRS and working out some sort of payment plan. But whatever it is, it's taking something that seems upsetting and overwhelming and it's breaking it down into a very doable form. So I hope that makes sense for you. Now, Going back to the sleeper energy in your second house, let's go three houses away. We have cancer is going to be squaring this energy. So let's take a look at Kronos, at Hades, and as Estrella in the sign of cancer in the 11th house. This is going to be attention that you're going to need to look at when it comes to your goals and gains where it is that your life is going over the next next 10 to 15 years. This could be looking at some sort of situation having to do with the home front, your home front, um, a circumstance having to do with an older sibling, a stepchild, grandchild, um, a daughter-in-law, son-in-laws. Those are all the people, all also our associates that hang out in that in that energy as well. So let's break it out. Let's start with Kronos and Cancer. So Kronos here is it's retrograde. So this means you really have to go from deep within you and really look at where are you struggling with your own bureaucratic red tape on a personal level? Where are you not jiving with the reality of your life right now? It really is about getting caught up in your own red tape. I know that sounds a little bananas, but it's so true. This idea of mastery and bureaucracy and all of this, and this is the way it's supposed to be, but because it's, it's retrograde, it's like, 
Am I getting too caught up in the way that I think something has to be in the way that something needs to be in order for me to have enough money for retirement, 11th house, in order for me to have the friends that I need, in order for that situation with that sibling to go the way I think it needs to go, in order for me to connect with people in a networking way in the way that I think things need to go, right? Those are all of those kind of energies. You're thinking about your future and are you shackling yourself in your ability to, to have that manifestation within your future that you really want. Because right now, with Hades sandwiched between Australia and Kronos, I'm really understanding Hades in this with this particular portal to be very connected to this idea of disintegration and this idea of breakdown, right? So it's almost like if you keep thinking the way that you're doing, you're going to end up not manifesting really what it is that you want. And a lot of it is going to be very connected to your your own energy that you're not able to let go of your own poverty mindset your own negative self-talk your own imposter syndrome your whatever it is right it's it's not being able to get out of get out of your own way now for some of you on a very practical level are you living someplace where you simply cannot afford it and you refuse to move to a different area that will be more comfortable and affordable because you like you, you like where you live. You like saying that you live in that place. You like that arena, whatever it is. Same thing having to do with like a job or whatever. But is that the thing that is what you need on your path right now is the bigger question. Do you know what I'm saying? So the, these, like, these energies with this eclipse, this is going to be bringing something to a head. It's going to be probably connected to your money, to your ability to have an energy of independence and stability, something gets eclipsed out. So something can get eclipsed in. And with this square, you may be pushed to like, you know what? I, I, I think, I think maybe I have to change jobs or I have to change where I live, or I have to change the situation for the sake of my family. Right. So it's a very complex set of energies that are going on. Now, on top of that, we do have Sedna at 29, at the anoretic degree, 29 degrees in Taurus in the ninth house of truth, of growth, of expansion, of moving forward. And Sedna is very connected to this idea of fearing, feeling powerless. But she also indicates where we can get out of our own way, where you can overcome these feelings, where she's about recognizing you feel powerless here, but you're really not. But what you need to do is change your perspective and lean into something that might feel a little uncomfortable, but it's the very thing that you need to do. Ninth house, when it comes to where you live, where you go to school. If you're teaching in higher education, really looking at that experience, looking at your politics, looking at your religion, organized or otherwise, looking at something where, you know, if you're trying to get something published, if you're trying to get something out there to the world, but it's not working, do you need to maybe go back to the drawing board and and tweak some things about it in order for it to to manifest and move forward, right? There may need to be a change in your perspective and a change in your angle. I hope that makes sense to you. Now, we do have doings from the past coming back around, super karmic energy. We have Pallas Athena on the 29th going retrograde in your fourth house in the sign of Sagittarius. So things coming back around. So, you know, this is things are gonna be coming up. This is a, an, an, This is a thing where things are gonna be coming up for us to look at that are going to incite self-awareness and self-growth, things coming back, doings from the past. So not necessarily people, but it could be ideas or it could be thinking about a place we used to live, something that we used to do, going back home in some way, right? Because it's fourth house energy. Um, going back to something that you did once upon a time, or there being a return of somebody or something from your deep past. This could be, right, because it's fourth house. So it could be like a family member, um, somebody who you haven't seen in a long time, could definitely be an energy like that. Um, for some of you, it could be somebody who is like your metaphorical home space who could be revisiting. Um, it could be, again, going back to something, a point in time, or remembering is retrograde, remembering a point in time. This is going to be very personal. 
a point in time where you felt a lot more emotionally stable and secure. And you're gonna really be very called to return to that. Now, for some of you, it could just be a way of living. For others of you, it could be a physical move. For others of you, it could be um, you know, making the decision now. You might not act on it now, it might take six months, right? But making a real uh, realizing that it, that you want to change. You, you, what it is that you're doing for work. And I'm not surprised because Pluto is in your sixth house of work, right? So that is what's going on there. Was there anything else I wanted to talk about? I don't recognize socializing that much towards the end of the month, just because the energies are going to just be really heightened. Um, I think everything else I spoke about in the daily, in the monthly forecast, but I did want to pull these other players into the conversation. Um, okay, guys, I think that's it. So I hope this was helpful in some way, Libra. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you guys next time. You guys take care now. Bye-bye. Libra, it's all about you. <laughs> oh, this is going to be good for you. You know what? You, Cancer, Capricorn, some of you are, mm, actually you, Gemini, Leo, let me see my notes here. Aquarius and Sag um, are going to be having like the best, I guess the best experiences, but let's, let's unpack this because this is happening in your sign. Um, definitely a time of confusion though, going into this, right? There's no question about it. I mean, it's happening in your first house, but let's just understand that when the sun opposing you went into that seventh house, like everybody was just sort of like in this space of what's my purpose? What am I doing? Very confusing energy. Don't be confused why you're confused. You're supposed to be confused right now because there are things going on. Things going on. Now, there could be things going on in your marriage. There could be things going on having to do with your work as well. Because seventh house has to do with contracts as far as your boss or bosses. Okay, maybe things are fine with them. But it's also depending on what it is that you do for work. If you have anything where you're working with clients, patients, customers, where you're offering services to someone, right? The energies could have been really weird and confusing leading up to this eclipse, right? Like, I'm not sure, is this supposed to be what I'm doing? I'm not sure. And it's that confusing energy coupled with like Mars going into Pisces where it's like having a really hard time balancing out responsibilities between work, play, sleep, when do I do what? And it's generally because of this confusion, right? That's leading into the eclipse. So the eclipse is going to happen on the 25th at three o'clock in the morning. Okay. So you'll be sleeping, but not that you'll wake up and just be like, oh, the world is so different. It's not going to be like that, of course. But this is really going to be a time where um, you're going to be reinventing yourself. You know, you really have to know that a, a seriously powerful reset is very possible during this time. And if you allow it and you open yourself up to it, it could be very, very, very successful for you. So you want to be very courageous with things in your life that cause you any fear that you know damn well are holding you back. I'm not going to have enough money. I'm not, I, I don't want to be alone. I, I'm scared to like, you know, go in that direction, whatever it is, Libra. And you know, it's, you can struggle with that analysis paralysis, right? It does depend on other things in your particular chart, but the archetype of Libra, and I say that all the time, it's because you're, you're the scales. You could see things this way and you could see things that way, very diplomatic, but to the point of, not doing anything, right? Because because everything could make sense when nothing makes sense at all, right? It's that kind of thing. So love and deep connections um, and uh, greater adventures, definitely things that you've been wanting to feel. It's not even necessary like actions. It's more about things that would bring you a feeling that you've been longing for are on the horizon there for you, okay? So kind of keep that sort of like in the background there because yes, that is that eclipse. Now, because there's Mercury is very involved in this eclipse because it's in the seventh house and it's in Aries, whenever Mercury is involved in eclipse, it almost always means some sort of messaging that comes in. So you could be getting some sort of message from a boss or bosses. You could be told something from one of your patients or your clients. It sort of makes some sort of significant difference or have some sort of experience that sort of changes your your um, 
your perspective on how you on how you view work and obviously it could have something to do with a significant other now the eclipse eclipse something's out and brings something in so some of you may be your partner might be asking you to get married a move in together some of you may be asking someone for a divorce or you know a partner might be asking you for a divorce right but it's this eclipsing out so something could be eclipsing but remember what, whatever's getting eclipsed out was truly 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 not good for you at the end of the day that you have to just sort of really lean into and know okay so let's talk about Aries which is opposing you because we have a lot of action going on here we have the sun we have part of fortune we have Vulcan we have North and we have Chiron we have Mercury so let's go with Eris. Eris is a dwarf planet, right? Is at 24 degrees conjuncting Mercury. And this is very connected to this idea of strife and discord, like just feeling this idea of strife and discord and energies, right? She can speak to this idea of rivalrous energies, adversity, quarrels, revenge, jealousy kind of things right so you might be dealing with that in a in a marriage in a situation with a boss or bosses you know and any of the 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 arenas that i mentioned it could certainly be that but it could also just simply be this very discordant energy with where you're at in your marriage in your job in this space and it's like you can't not see it because it's conjunct mercury and so it's very obvious on your mind, right? And it's not something that you could just like hush. Now, we also have Vulcan in the house here, okay? So Vulcan represents our power to break things down. Like, I mean, break thing, break it down, down to the studs. I'm not talking about like, oh, if only you would just communicate a little bit better and clean up your underwear, right? Or put the dishes away or... Um, you know, for your boss, if only you wouldn't be so aggressive if I was five minutes late or throw things at me, you know, last minute and expect them to be done five minutes ago, that kind of thing. Those are like little band-aidy things. I'm talking about down to the ground, right? It's all about breaking it down into almost that crystallized form so that it could be refused into a whole different new form you know, new experience, new situation. Now, for some, it's going to be divorce. For others of you, it's going to be like, if we don't go to counseling and break this down to the studs and rebuild it together, there is no way that this is really going to work over the long term. It's that kind of energy. Now, many of you may be moving into that space and saying, maybe this is just what I'm meant to be living. I'm just meant to just be in something like this. And you have to be very careful of that voice becoming too loud because, you know, you need to forge new, you need to lead with your heart, not your head um, right now is a good way to go. Don't overthink anything. I know that's difficult for air signs, you know, I'm a Gemini sun, um, you know, us, you know, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, you know, we're, we're naturally air, right? So, you know, Mercury being very air, it's, it's, it rules Gemini, rules Virgo too, which even though Virgo is earth, is very about problem solving, right? So you're going to be very focused on, on this idea of problem solving energy. Now, um, so we have those energies and we have it with Chiron and, and, um, obviously the North node, very destiny driven energy. So expect this eclipse to create an, a, a serious rippling effect again, along this axis, you versus other, right. Um, and some big changes are going to be happening on the other side of this. Now let's talk about the fact that you are also here. This Libra energy is squaring cancer in the 10th house. So that, that, that square is very connected to like, um, like a discordant energy again it's and it's you know it's like a stressful situation that needs addressing and so we have chronos we have hygiene and we have astray so let's talk about these let's talk about chronos first is retrograde so this is going to be manifesting internally and this is very internally in 10th house has to do with career public reputation you're standing in the world chronos is very connected to authority very connected to leadership and mastery is very connected also to a difference of opinions and bureaucracy and nonsense. Now, because it's in the 10th house of career, you may be think, dealing with a lot of bureaucratic nonsense when it comes to a work situation 
or because it's in the sign of cancer and cancer is very connected to the home environment or the idea of property and real estate and or your emotional stability, this is where on a very internal level, you may be having a hard time mastering that energy, right? But that you have to create your own sense of leadership within yourself when it comes to your career and your future right now, right? Because you could be dealing with your own self-imposed bureaucratic red tape, right? Where you're saying that things need to be a certain way and maybe they don't need to be a certain way. And this is a time to really think about and rethink your path. The 10th house has to do with your long-term plans, right? And so where you thought you were going, you're likely not going, okay? I mean, let, like we've been talking about that, but now is when you're really, you've probably been a little resistant to the changes that may need to be made here. Um, but something does need to be um, kind of revisited and let go of because in the middle we have Hades and then we have Estrella. I'll come back to Hades in a minute. But Estrella is very connected to this idea of the inability to let go of something, right? And it does. she does speak to these blockages, right, that are created in our own energy that stop us from seeing when something is over or finished. And it's it's ready for something new to begin. So, right, so she's there at this, uh, a very healthy seven degrees, right? Working in the same space as the midheaven. So you know there's got to be either a change in the work environment or a change in your long-term path because you, you, you're deteriorating. I, that sounds so hyperbolic. I understand that, but let me explain. Hades is connected to suffering, strife, many different things, Right. But when this particular portal, working with Cronus and Estrella, sandwiched in the middle, it's this idea of I'm breaking down in this situation. I feel myself dying ever so slightly a little bit more each day in this job, in this marriage, in this situation. It's breaking me down one layer at a time, right? This is going to be very loud in your energy on a soul level. And it's supposed to be because some sort of change needs to happen. You're not supposed to feel so questioned in your ability to feel emotionally secure in whatever it is that you're in. That's not normal, that's not healthy. No, nothing in life is perfect, right? But we try to meet our emotional security needs as, as well as possible, right? And so what is getting in the way? And with that Kronos energy in there, you want to make sure that your own personal red tape and your own negative self-talk is not keeping you in a space because you're too afraid of becoming more than who and what you are right now. Because you're afraid, oh my God, I'm not going to have money. Oh my gosh, what are the, you know, in cancer? What if I don't have a child? What if I don't have enough money for my children? What if I don't have... You got to calm down because you are going to create energetic blocks. If that is your experience right now, Libra, I'm telling you right now, don't do it. You have to get in front of that negative self-talk and say, this is nothing but an emotion. This is not based in fact. Let me be stronger and more proactive in figuring out a way to get myself to not feel this way. And what is the key to that? Information information. Get out there and start looking for another job. Get in touch with whoever it is that you have to get in touch with about doing your job differently, about expanding yourself in that realm. If it has to do with a child, mothering, or you know anything connected to mothering, having to do with your children, make the phone calls that you need to make to get the information to arm you in the way that you need. If it has to do with having a baby, contact the IVF specialist. Do with the doctors that you need to do. Be proactive in this energy because you have it all on your side. This is a portal that if you don't use, you don't have anyone else to blame but yourself here, okay? So that is for some of you. Now, some of you may be in the space where, oh my gosh, I want to have a baby, but I can't stand my partner. Ah, there you're going to have to make a decision. And that's going to depend on things that are in your personal chart, okay? Because I do see that easily being the story for many of you right now. Now, we also have Sedna at 29 degrees in Taurus in the eighth house of endings and beginnings. Sedna is very connected to this idea of feeling powerless. So eighth house is connected to other people's money, lawsuits that have any sort of like dollar amount, uh, you know, like an alimony child support kind of thing. It has to do with debt, taxes, 
um, endings and beginnings, moving, right? So all when it comes to all of these things, you feel powerless, but however, she's also put there because she also shows, yes, you might feel powerless, but this is nothing but a false idea. This is the very energy that she is engaging you in to become more powerful, but it is about you. You have to play a more important role and a more proactive role in overcoming these feelings and making the adjustments in order to bring you the life that you need in the way of stability, because Taurus is very connected to the idea of stability. And in that ninth in that in that eighth house at the 29th degree, there is nothing stable. You do not feel very stable when it comes to your finances. They're there, then they're not there. Am I going to lose everything if I leave? Am I going to be okay? And it could really incite a hoarding sensibility. And it could be like, where well, you're just so worried about money where you feel like you have to hoard it, where you'll make money. And because of how it's such, because the eighth house is like, how we blend with other, you could be very secretive about money right now with a partner, you know, or if you're working, you're like, well, I'm not really making a lot of money and hoarding it away. It could be, you could also hoard your belief system, hoard relationships, you know, um, there could be like hoarding going on there and such a deep fear of change. I mean, that is very, very clear to me, but I want to say something. That fear is real. This eclipse is trying to push you into that discomfort so that you can incite the change. Now, on March 29th, we do have, um, I just want to make sure it's on this. Yeah, um, Palace is going retrograde in your third house. So third house has to do with communication, siblings, extended family, your neighbors, your neighborhood. And Palace going retrograde is going to be a very um, introspe introspective uh kind of experience where doings and things are going to be returning from the past for you to look at, for you to revisit, for you to either embrace again or let go of finally as a way of becoming a better version of yourself. Okay. Um, it's very connected to wisdom and retrograde, very connected to self-growth, self-awareness, but what's coming up to look at in that very mental house, right? Because it's a mercury ruled house here. What's coming up from the past? You know, what do you need to revisit, learn from, right? This is such a good energy for you to embrace and really say, what do I have to seriously go back to or let go of finally in order for me to move forward? You know, and because it's in the third house, it could be your own thought process. You know, what it is that you thought had to be. Yeah, could certainly be that. Um, is there anything else that I wanted to? You know, I'm telling everyone not to socialize very much towards the end of the month. If you could afford, if you could, um, if you could avoid it. Um, that full moon eclipse is also it's quincunxing that Saturn energy as well in Pisces in the sixth house. Yeah, so I could definitely see a lot of you looking at your health. Um, are there changes that need to be? going on now it could bring a message again because again this eclipse energy and with it quincunxing saturn there could be news coming in about somebody's health um a health situation that needs addressing could certainly be going on um or some sort of it could be an uncomfortable message uh having to do with work that you're needing to navigate but again, none of this is bad. It's it's happening exactly the way it's supposed to. And you're going to know what to do on the other side of this. So the confusion will not be there as profoundly. So hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much for hanging out with me. And I will see you guys next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. Scorpio, this is going to be an interesting um, eclipse for you guys. So it is going to be happening in your 12th house, which is a very tucked away house. For a lot of you, this is going to be very um, kind of like very personal, very introspective. 
there's a lot of confusion leading up to it. And it really has more to do with that sun in Aries in the sixth house. And then, of course, Mars going into Pisces. Such a weird energy where it's like everyone's sleep is weird, you know, trying to balance out like fun, play, work, th you know, have to do things with want to do things and rest and 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 but this general feeling of like where the hell is my life going i am so uncertain right now and being confused about the confusion and that's just the energy that we're going into the eclipse with and that's okay if you're feeling that you're on point but i feel like for a good majority of you for the archetype of scorpio the past is going to be haunting the hell out of you towards the end of the month when this eclipse happens on at three o'clock in the morning on the 25th um, lots of very deeply buried memories and emotions, um, are going to be coming up, you know, they're just not good. You know, on a soul level, your energy is not going to want to keep them in anymore, right? Because the eclipse eclipses something out so that something new can be eclipsed in and the eclipse out is coming from the Libra energy, right? So there could be an eclipsing out of something having to do with, the way you think about situations with your children, a relationship, connection to a boss or bosses, realizing that you want to start working your business differently. Um, for some of you, because it's 12th house, getting in front of an addiction once and for all, any sort of self-sabotaging behaviors, eclipse out, eclipse in the Aries energy, fresh path, new perspective, but that's not always very comfortable, right? You don't want to be afraid of it. Please, please, please. I don't want any messages. I'm scared. So a lot of you guys get, it. this is about protecting your energies. There's nothing to be afraid. Of. You have to understand astrology is not good or bad. It's just not, it just is. It is. It's just, it is. And then it's like, okay, this is what's going on. How do I protect myself? Again, it is very like the weather. I know I use that, that, um, that simile may be a little too much, but it is very like the weather where, if it's raining out, we're gonna we're, we're going to wear certain shoes and not wear other shoes, and we're probably going to carry an umbrella. And why? Because we want to protect ourselves against the elements, right? If it's snowing out, same thing. If it's really sunny and hot, same thing. Are any of them bad or good or intense? No, it's just it's it's life. It's the cycles of life. It's the way it is. And can some be more comfortable than others? Of course, but it's, we, we should get out of the, out of the habit of labeling things good or bad because they're not, they just kind of are right. So for you, you know, um, don't be afraid of this energy because it's when we face those things that we are the most afraid of and we face those things face on, that's where the true growth and, and the forward movement, um, comes in. It's, it's the space of denial, right? It's that space of, you know, no, that's not me. I never do that. No, I'm totally this way. I'm always this way. What do you mean? We never grow in that space. If honestly, if anyone ever says that to you, you just, you can silently say to yourself, don't be rude and say it to the person, of course. Um, but that's where, you know, you have to think to yourself, okay, this, we all have work to do, but this person is, is really stuck right? When, whenever somebody says, no, I'm always this way. I never do that. You know, those are those hyperbolic kind of terms always and never. And, you know, it's always other people and it's never. Okay. So we need to like take a deep breath and sit down and just look at our choices really honestly and recognize where, where did our, how did our choices get us to where we are? Right. And for a lot of you, you may be maybe in the most amazing place in your life right now. So I'm working with a lot of Scorpios who are in a beautiful place right now. But these things coming up from the past that obviously have not been healed and you don't, you, there's no value add in squishing those back down. So, you know, face them so that you can grow. Because once you expose them, you throw some light on them. That's when some really nice, beautiful healing energy has the opportunity to actually flourish. And you really want to do it now. This is a very car beautiful karmic energy right now. Beautiful if we use the energy in a nice way. Now, this Virgo energy, which is happening on the on the 25th, is probably going to bring some sort of information in because it's working with Mercury. Mercury is very involved in this eclipse with a lot of other energies, as you could see in Aries, which I am going to break down. Um, 
But markers are connected to communication. So this could be some sort of information coming in having to do with your health, having to do with a job situation, having to do with a pet, having to do with something very connected to how it is that you show up um, when it comes to your daily responsibilities. Um, this is also going to be quincunxing uh, Saturn and Pisces, which is in the fifth house. So this could be connected to um, some sort of... Uh, connection to a relationship because Saturn in Pisces in the fifth house, there could be some like, um, you could be experiencing some sort of stagnation in a relationship or some sort of stagnation when it comes to your connection with your children or um, one of your children may be delivering some sort of news um, pertaining to their love life or something going on with one of their children as well. It could be something there. Again, this does not necessarily have to be bad news. It could certainly be good news there as well, but it's a quincunx. So it means that once the news come, it comes in, you're going to have to do something with it. Right. Um, and so it might require adjustment. Okay. Um, now, working with this, we have this opposing Aries energy. So let's break down some of these glyphs that you may not recognize. So we do have um, Eris here. So Eris is a dwarf planet, and she is um, very connected. She's the goddess of strife and discord, which can look like anything from issues of like arguments, rivalrous energies, revenge, jealousy, stuff like that. Okay. Now, it, she is working in an exact conjunction with Mercury. So you can be arguing because of these discordant energies that you're feeling when it comes to where is this relationship going? What's going on with this work situation? What's going on with this health situation as well? So I, you know, it's, it's that kind of energy. Now, on the other hand, the more positive manifestation could certainly be resourcefulness and a very strong desire to work towards resolve. And there's no better place to work on a resolution and some sort of strategy than in the sixth house. So I do feel like whatever is discordant, whatever you're feeling a sense of strife in, maybe it's a health situation, maybe it's a uh, how how you're showing up on the day-to-day, -day, having to do your daily responsibilities, you are going to be in this problem-solving mode, which would be which will be very nice. Now, Vulcan is retrograde in there um, at 11 degrees. It's opposing this uh, this moon energy, and a Vulcan represents the power that we have to smash or break down into like a very sort of like you know, and I'm, I'm saying like a crystallized form, like really broke down in order to pave the way for the fusion of some sort of new energy, a new form of that thing. So it's something being broken down so that we could form something new, right? So there's got to be an end to a way that you've been taking care of yourself. There's got to, there's a way of responsibility versus an irresponsible way of living, have you been very responsible? Have you been as proactive as, as you've been, you know, you're supposed to be, right? This is what Vulcan really asks of us here, you know? Um, it's very important for us to all lead from our heart and not our head. Actually, during this eclipse, we do have to be very careful of that as well. Um, but, you know, part of fortune is in the house. And, you know, you really want to, you have an image in your head that is very indicative of what it is that you want for your path moving forward. And if your reality is not in alignment with that, particularly in within the realm of your day-to-day -day experiences, you're going to rail against that. So what do you do? Well, first of all, stay away from any sort of toxic energies, which are going to push your buttons, number one. Number two, if you are dealing with people who are intentionally, maybe even unintentionally, not respecting you enough, not honoring you enough in a way where, um, you know, you're having an experience with them that you feel like is fair and equitable. This is something that you're going to really need to be looking at because the eclipse is in the house of self-sacrifice and martyrdom. Something's got to be eclipsed out. So if that relationship or that situation with that boss is taxing you in a way where you are just all kinds of uncomfortable. And it's like, this is not good for me. This is so toxic. This is just not what I want anymore for myself. This eclipse is going to bring it to the forefront, right? 
So that is that is certainly going to be going on. Now, we also have these energies in Cancer. So we have Kronos, we have Estrella, and we have Hades, all in Cancer. And it's going to be squaring this energy. So between your 12th house and your 9th house of truth, expansion, how you're moving into your future. The ninth house is all about your religion, organized or otherwise, your politics, um, law, legalities, local governance. So there's a square there, okay? So there's going to be some tension. Now let's talk first about what Cronus means. And Cronus is retrograde, so this means that you have to work on this within first. And Cronus is very connected to this idea of being your own authority, being your own master, being your own leader, and breaking down your own self-imposed bureaucratic red tape on a personal level, okay? That's number one. Now, second to that, you could be dealing with bureaucratic red tape when it comes to some sort of legal situation. When it comes to, some of you may be feeling very passionate about the political, the political landscape right now. Understandable, right? It's very kind of everywhere. So, you know, and these three are hanging out in, in that house of, for you, in the house of politics, in the house of belief system, um, higher mindedness, higher education, um, your ability to move forward in your life, your ability to uh, advertise, market, launch something, right? So we have Haiti sort of in the middle. Now with this particular portal of Australia, well, Australia, let me speak about Australia is also, Australia and Cancer is about this inability of being able to let go of something. Now when it's in Cancer, Cancer is very connected to emotional stability. So it's like you're very, you're having a very hard time letting go of a home, letting go of emotional stability, letting go of something that you can, that you count on right now. But Australia is also, um, all about pointing to this blockage that is stopping you from seeing that something is finished and it's over and it really is time to start something new there. Now, in the ninth house, this could have to do with maybe you're realizing if you're in school, you want to change schools, you want to change political parties, you want to change um, religions, you're changing your belief system, whatever it is, you're recognizing that something needs to give because this Hades in the middle of Cronus and Australia has you slowly, very ever so slowly deteriorating from sitting in the middle of these energies where it's like dealing with the bureaucracy of something and not being able to let something go. It's wearing you down. It's wearing you down. And you really have to pay attention to that. This is an important portal. This is an important conversation that is happening within this eclipse, okay, that needs to be looked at. You have to see where's your belief system maybe getting in your own way, negative self-talk, needing something to be a certain way, not budging unless something is a certain way, you know, all of that. This is not going to serve you at this point, okay? So I just want to say that, right, because you have so much supportive energy for you to make good changes being stuck in an old in any sort of old paradigm is not going to serve you now let's look at um at sedna sedna is at 29 degrees in taurus in your seventh house of partnerships and contracts so the 29th anoretic degree is very connected to the shadow manifestation of whatever sign it's in and in the sign of taurus this is about being like obsessed with this idea of having a strong foundation money feeling, um, feel, you know, trying to feel very connected. Now it's very interesting because Taurus is also very connected to this idea of independence, right? But Sedna is very connected to the idea of powerlessness. So it's almost like feeling powerless in your ability to be independent in the way that you would really like to be. Like you would really like to let go of that person, that situation, that job opportunity, the way in which you're working. But you are telling yourself that you can't because you're powerless against it. But Sedna does also indicate that she is very connected to overcoming those feelings and playing your own part in making adjustments in your life to bring yourself the stability that you need, that it's a false narrative that you need to stay in that thing. You don't need to stay in that thing. And staying in that thing is, is ultimately going to end up holding you back. So you're going to have to realize, is that relationship giving you what it is that you need? That job, that deep friendship, 
those seventh house energies, the way in which are you are you are you insistent on conducting your work in a certain way, the way that you execute your work, the way that you service your clients, the way that you service your business, because that's also seventh house. Are you so stuck in a way that you are not willing to to change? to allow that stability for yourself. Because it's when you open yourself up to that change, that's where the growth is going to be entering. Okay, and the last thing that I want to really mention here is palace. So palace is in your second house. And Sag, on the 29th, four days after the eclipse, um, palace is going to be going retrograde. And so when she goes retrograde, she's very connected to wisdom um, to begin with. But when she goes retrograde, expect things to come back from the past. So doings from the past are going to be coming back. And when it's in the second house, it could be a way of making money could come back around from the past. Um, thinking about a way that you used to take care of yourself. Going back to an old way of being. Reconnecting with yourself in a way that you haven't in a long time. And all of this is going to grow you. This is very connected to self-awareness, very connected to self-growth. So a very karmic energy. I feel like for you guys, this palace retrograde is going to be very beneficial, very beneficial, especially because I have to tell you that this, the second half of the month is very, very good for money. It's very good for wealth. It's very good for self. It's very good for work. It's not a good time to spend money frivolously on like dinners and clothes and stuff that you don't really need. Great energy to invest in a business, to invest in anything that's going to yield some sort of profit for you in some way or another, or, and or, great time if you're going to spend, spend it in something that is going to improve you. So second house is very connected to the physical body. So anything, maybe joining a gym, doing something like that, that's going to end up increasing your health. Um, but also internally, maybe going to therapy, investing in a self-help book, investing in some sort of past life regression, uh, investing, could be investing in, a, in an astrology reading to really understand your chart, um, anything like a, a webinar, a seminar, anything like that, anything where you're investing in yourself, really the, the dividends that are going to be, um, given back to you are seriously tenfold in this energy, but no wasting money on unnecessary things just for about like three weeks, guys. Okay. Let's wait until we get through. Um, no, why don't we wait until Mercury comes out of retrograde? Just go on a little bit of a hiatus for a month, just one month, just buy what it is that you need hold off on things that you don't absolutely need. Okay, guys. So that is what I have. I think that's pretty much everything that I wanted to talk to you guys about. I hope that was helpful in some way. Thanks so much for hanging with me and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Sagittarius. So this eclipse, you guys are the only sign that I'm telling to be social. Everyone else I'm telling second half of the month, take it easy, sit back a little bit, Gemini to a little bit of a lesser degree than the other signs, but really you, this is about being a social butterfly, but this eclipse is about really connecting in a very powerful way to what matters, family, home, your own personal development, right? It's, it's, 11th house is very connected to this idea of expanding yourself. What are you doing over the next 10 to 15 years? This is very connected to getting some sort of message out to the masses. This is connected to your friends. This is a very, it's the most social house. It's connecting, connecting. It's the house of connecting to, um, as people within an industry, you know, hobnobbing, rubbing elbows, doing all of that good stuff, really good energy there. Um, so take advantage of this when this eclipse comes. Take advantage of an of of the of the open energy. This is a very open portal in that eleventh house. Seriously, so very nice. Um, pay attention to the people around you. Obviously, um, even in the media, you may even be in in the media. Depends on what it is that you're doing here. Um, but connecting to people, thoughts, and belief systems that inspire you. Um, and whatever that means for you and whatever is going on in your life right now, 
It's also a really good time to bring your life into balance and distance yourself from those who don't support what it is that you're doing, who are naysayers, who are negative Nancy's. You will not have any patience for them right now. And the thing is, it, you don't need any help being confused about things right now. And a lot of it has to do with in the fifth house of joy, falling in love, love affairs, romance, monetizable talents, creative project, creative things, feeling confused, right? Because when that sun went into Aries on the 19th, it was like, what am I doing? How do I feel about this? What's the future of this? I have no idea. I'm confused about why I'm confused. Why is this confusing? It shouldn't have to be confusing, right? And when it comes to like, some of you might be dealing with that with relationship, a situation with your kids, some project that you're trying to get out there, your own business that you're trying to start, anything that's like fifth house connected like that, or even a vacation that you're trying to plan. It's like, why is this a thing? Why is this even a thing? Why am I confused? I shouldn't be confused by all rights. I shouldn't be, but I am. And it's all of that energy. And then of course, Mars going into Pisces on the 22nd is just going to bring this difficulty with balance, right? It just is, right? A, a few days before, and we're feeling the eclipse before that, but in that fourth house, it's going to be a hard time balancing home and work and sleep and play and you know, all of these things, like how is it happening? And you may even be experiencing people who you live with or who are in your immediate environment that they're experiencing the same thing and that they may need some grace from you as well, right? Um, but that's what's going to be going on, like leading up to those energies. But let's talk about the actual eclipse because the eclipse is happening at 3 a.m. Um, on the March 25th in your 11th house. And it is a Mercury involved kind of eclipse, right? Because Mercury is in Aries. It's also going to be conjunct error. So I'm going to talk about that in a moment. Um, but it's all about messaging, right? So some sort of message, fifth house energy could be coming in having to do with a monetizable talent. Some sort of news could be coming in about an entrepreneurial effort, uh, confirmation for a vacation, um, news about a, some sort of relationship, news coming in having to do with one of your children, especially your oldest child. Um anything like that. So now because it's an eclipse energy, because it's working with the, the, the nodes and because it's working um, obviously with very emotional um, energies, the, the, the news that comes in, it can be, I'm not going to say it's bad. It could just be something that you're going to need to deal with. Ultimately, it's going to be a very good thing for you, but it's going to be something that you're going to need to deal with, okay? A lot of it also has to do with the fact that it is quincunxing Saturn in the fourth house, right? Saturn in, in this Pisces energy. So, you know, there could be some sort of discordant energy on the home front or discordant energy when it comes to something going on with one of your kids or your ability to feel really emotionally secure in a situation. Maybe nothing's going on at home and nothing's going on with one of your kids or your significant other, but maybe it's something's happening with this eclipse that's coming in where you're like, I am not sure if I feel actually feel very comfortable with this, where you feel like your feet are just a little bit off the ground. If that is the case, when the eclipse hits, that's okay. Do not make any big sweeping decisions, okay? Because something's going to become very clear very soon in that area, okay? So there's no need to hyper-focus on, oh my God, what am I going to do? I have to decide what I'm going to do. Trust me, the decision is going to become very obvious you know, to you. Now, let's talk about what's going on in Aries across the wheel right? Because something gets eclipsed out, something gets eclipsed in. So Aries is obviously very involved in this energy as well. I kind of broke down a lot of these energies in my general forecast for the month of March. And I said that there were other conversations going on with this eclipse that I wanted to do the video um, based on. And that would be a lot of these glyphs that you probably do not recognize. So we have the god, a couple of goddess or two in here, a dwarf planet or two, an asteroid or two. So let's talk about Eris. So Eris is a dwarf planet and she really speaks to this idea of strife and discord. She's at 24 degrees in Aries in your fifth house. Okay. And she is 24 degree conjunct Mercury. So Mercury is what's on your mind. What you're feeling on your mind is a discordant energy. Your, your mind, your mental realm is feeling a sense of strife. Now, there could be like this 
energy of adversity, quarreling energy, rivalrous energy, revenge energy, jealous energy, one-upmanship one kind of energy. So specifically, right, if you are in talks with an energy about something, I don't care if it's a relationship, if it's a project, whatever it is, this eclipse could bring this kind of rivalrous energy to a head where you are not feeling very comfortable, but pay attention to that. Pay attention to that. We also have Vulcan in Aries retrograde. So deep within Vulcan speaks to breaking something down so that it can be created into a new form or in a new way. Okay. So some sort of opportunity that you're realizing is not good for you can break down at least in the way that it's been presented up to now. So this could be if you have an investor going with a different investor or completely revamping your agreement that you have with a particular investor at this point. If it has to do with the relationship, realizing maybe you guys got off totally on the wrong foot, something's got to be redone. You might be realizing that, you know, something going on in one of the life of one of your children, maybe they're realizing they have to completely leave something and start over in a new arena. So that could have to do with work, maybe can have to do with relationship because the eclipse is impacting the energy of Libra. So a lot of relationships are going to be getting looked at here, right? And because it's opposing the fifth house, one of your children, you may be getting news that one of your children is deciding to divorce their spouse or you may be realizing um, on a positive note, you may be realizing or getting news that one of your children are pregnant, right? It could certainly be that as well, um, some sort of situation there. Um, it could manifest several different ways. So I'm just, you know, I'm giving like for the, for the archetype. But what's important to understand with that Vulcan energy is we, you need to understand like something new that's been going on needs to be broken down in order for something new to take its place okay so that that's that Vulcan energy and it's only six degrees away from the sun so it's it's working with, and the, it's sandwiched between that and the north node this is a very blessed energy like this is seriously like honestly if something hasn't worked out Sagittarius there is you know, do you ever hear the saying rejection is protection sometimes, that God is watching out for us, that spirit has our backs, that our, our guardian angels are in overtime sometimes, like that is that energy, okay? So either something is getting broken down to be rebuilt or there's some sort of other opportunity, but what's not going to be happening is more of the same in that particular area, okay? So I hope that is clear. The other thing I want to talk about is what's happening in the sign of cancer because Libra, this Libra energy where the eclipse is happening is in the 11th house, but it's squaring the eighth house, cancer energies. So it's going to be squaring Kronos, Hades, and Astraea. So Kronos is very connected to authority, leadership, mastery, disagreement, bureaucracy. Now, the eighth house is other people's money. So if you happen to be in a situation where other people's money is a thing in your life, and that's just one understanding of it. The eighth house also rules divorce. It rules absolute commitment. It rules investments, other people's money, the stock market, um, insurance payouts, um, inheritances. Um, it rules the past anxiety and depression, the control that our past has over us, it rules sex and intimacy. Okay, it's still a lot of things, right? So Kronos here having to do with authority, leadership, mastery, differing of opinions and bureaucracy and red tape. So you might be dealing with a discordant energy when it comes to some sort of financing. Eighth house is also debt and taxes. This could be a, dis a discordant energy when it comes to that. Um, you might be very worried about the finances of your children as well, for some reason, as of late, um, in a more pressing way than maybe you had been up to now. Um, so that's another way it can manifest. But let's break these down, okay? Because Kronos retrograde is very connected to this idea of needing to look at 
that energy internally first. So this internal sense of bureaucratic red tape that you may be imposing on yourself onto a situation where you may be a little too stuck in a certain way saying, no, things need to be like this. It has to be like this. You can be very at odds with yourself over what you should um what you should uh, allow yourself to go with and or pull back from right in this particular area now Australia is very connected to this inability of letting go right and because the eighth house is very connected to this idea of control and the past um and other people's money and you know um the ability to change and transform it's this it could be a very blocking energy, right? Because it does point to these blockages that stop us from seeing when something is over and it's finished where something new has to begin. So, you know, it, for some of you, it's like realizing like, am I beating a dead horse with this situation in the way that it's been? Because it's, it's breaking you down. <clears throat> There's no question. Because Hades in the middle, I understand Hades in this particular portal with with Cronus and Estrella, I really do believe that that Hades here is more connected to the idea of disintegration, and you, and what I feel like is is you and it's disintegration in the sign of Cancer, which has to do with your emotional stability. It has to do with um your you know your home. Um, you may be feeling like you're losing your grip on things at home that things have sort of gotten out of hand in a certain way. For some of you, you may understand the energy that way. For others of you, you're realizing things are just getting too out of hand with some sort of investment situation. And you're just like, no, like this is breaking me down and I cannot allow it to have this level of control over me. That divorce may be breaking you down. You may be saying, you know what? I have to pick my battles and I have to realize, you know, really identify what's most important having to do with that business situation same thing having to do with dealing with your debt and taxes same thing right this could be a very good energy for getting in front of those things in order to incite a greater sense of stability within yourself because this is also very possible right again astray might have to do with the blockages but it's also about recognizing that what has to be let go of old habits an old way of thinking control in the way that you've had, right? Um, but there's got to be a revamping in the sensibility when it comes to shared resources with a significant other or um, having to do with a business situation, right? So really looking at that and looking at, you know, how could, how could you change things in that particular area of your life? Now, we do also have Sedna 20 at the anoretic 29th degree in the sign of Taurus in the sixth house. So sixth house has to do with your health, mental, physical, emotional. It has to do with daily work environment. It has to do with your pets. Now, Sedna is very connected to this idea of powerless, feeling powerless about a health situation, feeling powerless about some sort of work situation where something is bigger than you. And you're saying like, I can't help it. I don't have control over that. I don't have control over that situation, over that negotiation, over that whatever. I don't have control. You do have control because where she shows you and where you're feeling powerless is the same space where she's going to be very activated at the 29th degree to say you do have potential here to actually be the power that you need in order to play a more important role to bring stability to this arena for yourself. Right? You have more control than you realize, right? Making the right choices is the key. Now it's at the 29th degree and that always brings about the shadow manifestation of whatever sign that it's in. So it's in the sign of Taurus, which is very about feeling very controlling and very, no, it has to be this way and being very funny with your money maybe, or being very funny with the way things roll out. It's in the sign of Virgo, which could be hypercritical. So that hypercritical and very stuck kind of energy is actually not going to serve you. It's not going to serve you, right? Because it's in being able to understand where you can release the reins a little bit and look at things a little differently, that's where it's going to benefit you. Now, you may be feeling like you're dealing with people on the other side, where because it was vice versa, where they're being like that, they're being too controlling, they're being too protective of themselves to the point of maybe even paranoia, right? And it's like, okay, well, we're not going to move anywhere 
unless you move off your mark, right? You may find yourself having conversations like that with other people, or you may find other people having those conversations with you in one way or another. Maybe a little bit of both, right? You know, one of the conversations could be on the home front, the other could be on the work front, whatever it is, but there's going to need to be this moving off of the mark, whether it's you off your mark or somebody else off of their mark, this needs to happen. Now, what I do want to mention towards the end of the month on the 29th, we do have Pallas Athena is going to be going retrograde in your first house. Now, that first house is very indicative of your path that you're walking and Pallas is very connected to wisdom, but because she's retrograde, great this is about doings coming back from the past things coming back from the past that you've been involved in so this could be going back to an old way of thinking an old strategy calling someone that you used to work with um going back to an old an old way of doing something thinking back about the past some of you realizing that the way you behaved in the past manifested in a way that's really impacting your path right now. And now you're all about healing that, right? It's different ways that it can manifest, but whatever it is, palace retrograde in your sign is very connected to this idea of self-awareness, of wisdom, of growth, right? And you really want to look at what's coming in, what's coming up in order to move you forward. That's what this energy is all about. So I hope this was helpful for you in some way, guys. And by the way, I do want to mention on a financial note, the second half of this month is excellent for investing. It's excellent to put money into anything that's going to end up yielding some sort of return, even if it's minimal. Now, that 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 yield on return could certainly have to do with yourself. So investing in money, having to do for to improve your health, your mental, physical and emotional well-being, um, the way you understand yourself, putting money into that therapy, um, any sort of uh Again, self-help book, webinar, seminar, an astrology reading, a gym membership, um, anything like that, or an investment. Um, even if it's just putting something in where you're only getting a little bit of interest back, ultimately, if you're doing it like the second half of this month, particularly towards the um, around the eclipse energy, um, Believe it or not, because of the way we have this situated, it's going to end up yielding a lot more than you thought. So that's a very positive energy. What it's not good for is frivolous spending. So stay away from like Target and Home Sense and those of you who know those stores. You, you go in and you're like, oh, I need one thing. And you come out with like, I do anyway, with like all of these packages, right? Frivolous spending, big no-go, Right. You know, if you have to eat out, whatever, but make sure that you're being very smart, being very economical with your spending when it comes to clothing and anything excessive, like above and beyond, be careful of that. Um, and that's, I think that's about it. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next time. Bye, Sedge. Take care. Bye-bye. Everyone, I hope you guys are doing great. Let's talk about this eclipse. So the full moon lunar eclipse is happening at three o'clock in the morning on March 25th in your 10th house, the highest house of your chart. I do feel like you guys are one of the signs that are going to be um, dealing with, it's going to be a good eclipse for you, but it, it's going to feel a little uncomfortable. And let me be very specific. First of all, it's going to be working with Mercury. Okay, so... Um, that eclipse is happening actually in your 10th house of career, public reputation. It's standing in the world, status of your marriage, all of that stuff. So something's getting eclipsed out, something's getting eclipsed in, and there's some sort of message, right? Um, uh, because it's involving Mercury. And so the message, um, the messages are not, I'm not even going to say they're good, or they're bad. It could just be something that you're needing to deal with. Now, the, because Mercury is in the fourth house, it could be a message about a member of your family. It could be a message about you know, one of your kids. Um, it could be a message about something pertaining to your home, property, or real estate, or something 
that is going to impact your emotional security. Now, this does not have to be a bad thing. This would certainly be a good thing, okay? But it's eclipsed. If something gets eclipsed out, something gets eclipsed in. So some of you may be realizing that you got a new job offer and that you're going to be leaving another job or realizing that, you know, you're wanting to um, get a divorce or a separation, right? Because you're really not happy with um, the level of emotional security that you're feeling in the relationship. It's that kind of energy, right? Um, now it's, it is working with the sign of Aries. So it's very important that we understand this Aries energy. But before we get into that, I do want to say that this eclipse is also going to be quincunxing um, Saturn in Pisces in the third house. So a quincunx is a dis it's an uncomfortable discordant energy in the third house of messages in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is very serious. He's very responsible. Um, and in the sign of Pisces, there could be some sort of message coming in having to do with somebody's um, health. Um, having to do with, you know, some sort of, sort of somebody's, um, you know, uh, mental, physical, or emotional health. This could have to do with some sort of message having to do with an extended family member, a sibling, a neighbor. Um, there could be some sort of message coming in about a business deal as well. But it's something where when the message comes in, it needs to be dealt with. It's not smooth. This is not a smooth occurrence that's going to be going on. Now, on top of that, we have this um, this eclipse energy opposing Aries. So let's kind of unpack what's happening in Aries. You're looking at your fourth house going, oh man, there are so many energies in there. And yes, there are. A lot of them I, I dealt with in the uh, regular monthly forecast. So you're going to see some glyphs in here that you may not recognize. Um, so we're going to start with Eris. Eris is a dwarf planet and she is the goddess of strife and discord. And when she is in the fourth house in that Aries energy, there could be some um, issues of discordant energy that you're going to be dealing with, where there could be fights, rivalrous energy. I do more than you in the house. I'm paying more than you in the house, uh, whatever it is. And it could be this one upmanship. There could be some gaslighting, some sort of displacement happening, some sort of like revenge energy. And that's all very like hyperbolic, right? It's enough to understand that it could just be some sort of discordant energy when it comes to how emotionally stable you're feeling in your home environment and or your relationship. And some of you could be, and you might be a little worried about things, you know, in that space. Okay. Um, when we have this eclipse, where it's like, I hope everything is going to be okay. I'm not sure. And that I'm not sure energy is really speaking to this sun in Aries, to this um, to this Mars and Pisces energy. This sun in Aries energy, again, I spoke in the, in the monthly astrology, so I don't want to overspeak it, but it gives us this confused feeling and we're confused about why we're confused and we just are, where are we going and what are we doing? And when it's in the fourth house, you could be feeling like that about where you live. If you work at home, you might be feeling like that about your employment. Like, what am I doing? How am I working my life? I can't keep living like this. And with that Mars and Pisces energy, it's like, how do I balance out my head and my daily activities when it comes to sleeping enough and playing enough and connecting with friends and family enough? And how do I balance it all out? It's just like a busy, weird, wonky time. And then this message comes in where it's like, do I feel okay in this space? I'm not sure. And the message can come in in different forms, but there will be a message coming in, right? Now, in addition to that Eris energy, which is um, sitting at 24 degrees in Aries in that fourth house, we also have Vulcan. Vulcan is retrograde at, the, at 11 degrees. And Vulcan really does uh, speak to this idea of and represents this idea of smashing things down to the studs in order to rebuild something, right? This idea of breaking something down in order to create new, right? So it's because it's very connected about forging new energy, right? And so it's going to be very connected to that. This eclipse is going to be very connected to that. So a lot of you are going to be getting really focused on redecorating or moving or 
creating some sort of different energy in your house, getting into feng shui, or looking at the relationships of that you share with the people who you live with or your nearest and dearest, or looking at your job. Again, this idea of a job, because a lot of you, I'm telling you, like this Vulcan energy with this eclipse, this could have you being like, you know what? No. I can't do this anymore. I'm like burning myself out, cannot do it. I'm saying yes to everybody and their mother. And I just can't, I can't do it anymore. And I feel like for a lot of you, this is something that you're really going to have to pay attention to, to looking at this whole month, right? Because, you know, this is an interesting month when it comes to, how do I put this? Because I feel like it's kind of twofold. Is on the one hand, this whole month, especially around this eclipse, you, you're going to be using your intellect to benefit you. Your mind is going to be a huge asset to you this month. The way you think, the way you process, your work ethic, all of those things. But this eclipse in Libra could make you kind of fall prey to very faulty thinking, very judgy behavior, um, overindulgence with mind altering substances or an overindulgence in, in anything that could self-sabotage you. So it could even be like an overindulgence in spending, you know, an overindulgence in, um, you know, rumination and over, you know, where the scales are just out of balance. You know what I'm saying? So this is something that you're going to have to be very mindful of. You may also find yourself giving into some sort of expectation, especially like a societal expectation when you deeply don't even dislike, you, you, deep, you don't even like them. You deeply dislike those societal expectations. You actually don't even like them. You, you don't even want to deal with them. But it's like where you, you're in this position where you feel like you have to go along in order to get along. And that's really going to bother you this particular month, especially if it's connected to your work more than anything, I feel like for the great majority of you. Because this is a really great energy. I do have to say where it's really good for you to ground yourself in your own truth. And that really good thing there, you might be feeling very confused about many things in your life, but your own truth, you are not right? Even if you have to hide away for a week or two, the, those last week or two, the last week or two at the end of the month, or, you know, kind of rise above a situation, leaning into your own truth and rooting yourself there. Now, this doesn't mean that you're going to bite, you need to bite your nose off to spite your face, especially if it's connected to work. But you have to really understand like, what is not in alignment with your belief system? I'm really looking at that because that that can be a thing, especially co connected to your career this month, right? Um, again, so that you know this this idea of the opposition and and looking at these things. So that's Eris and 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 uh, and and uh, and Vulcan in Aries. This idea of you know needing to bring new form. Bringing to bring need, needing to bring in something new. So for some of you, it could be um, you know, establishing a new schedule for yourself. If you are working at home, others of you, it's going to be redecorating everything. Others of you, it's going to be a whole new home, right? Whatever it is, there's, there's definitely something being very lit up in that space. Now, um, let's look at cancer because cancer is squaring this energy. The Libra eclipse is happening in the 10th house, but squaring the seventh house of partnership and contracts. We do have Kronos, Hades, and Australia. So let's talk about Kronos first. This Kronos in Cancer is retrograde. So uh, Kronos is very connected to this idea of authority and leadership and mastery and having a difference of opinions and a lot of bureaucracy. So a lot of you may be feeling that way, um, but you have to ask yourself, is it real or is it just the way, is it just that you don't feel like listening to the bureaucratic nonsense that's going on. Um, you know, this could have to do with a boss or bosses, some sort of career situation, work situation, or even a legal situation, or it could even be within a relationship. Um, because it's, and, and the thing is, because Cronus is retrograde, this manifests internally first. So it really is about getting in touch with your own negative self-talk Capricorn. It really is about saying, you know, asking yourself, 
is what this person asking me to do really crossing a line that I'm telling myself that they're crossing? Or am I creating a situation where I'm getting so tripped up in my need to be the leader or being able to feel like I'm mastering the situation where I'm shooting myself in the foot? getting so caught up in your own bureaucratic red tape of your own narrative, of your own circumstances, right? Are you saying that something has to be a certain way in a relationship or that it should be a certain way within a job or how dare that boss be that way? I can't believe they're asking me to do that thing, right? I'm curious to see how this is going to roll out because I am a Capricorn rising. So I see this very clearly. And now the thing is, we have Kronos there. Let's go to Astraea because Astraea is very important. She is very connected to our inability to let go of things, right? And it points to blockages that stop us from seeing when something is done, it's dead, it's over, it's finished. It's time for something new to begin. And it's squished right in there with Hades, which and I'm understanding Hades with this particular portal with Cronus and Estrella right now in this particular reading to equal disintegration, feeling something is breaking down. Now, what's breaking down? The energy of Cancer. Cancer is very connected to your emotional stability. You're at a base of operations. So some of you may be like, you know what? I have to make changes in this relationship and or this work situation. Maybe your relationship is great. A lot of you may be in a very kind of like sweet um, space with your relationships right now. And this may be very connected to work where you're just like saying, this is breaking me down. I'm dying just a little bit more each day from, you know, recognizing that things should be going this way, but not being able to let go at the same time and feeling that stuckness. For some of you, that stuckness in the marriage, the job, whatever it is, right? It's like, I feel stuck. But guess what? You're not that stuck. You're stuck right now because you're supposed to be. You're supposed to feel frustrated and a little bit confused. And you're supposed to feel tired and you're supposed to start gaining a lot of clarity, though. Your energy level will be picking up. Um, for sure. I mean, like even today, I feel my energy is a little more, is a little more uh, elevated than it's been um, than that first week or so. Um, but it's, a, you know, really for like another few days, it's going to be a little depleted for, from the reading of this, right? I'm reading this on March 8th, um, leading up to that energy, but really getting in front of what feels right, and where can you make adjustments? Because adjustments can be made in, in order to alleviate um, this kind of tension. Now, I do want to mention Sedna. Sedna is at 29 degrees in the sign of Taurus in your fifth house. So twenty the 29th degree is the anaerobic degree. So we always have to understand the house, the, the house um, uh, landlord, and we have to understand the sign that it's in. So that, that the sign is in, is in Taurus. So the shadow manifestation of Taurus is absolute control to the point of needing to hoard. Um, and it's, you know, it's, and it's a Venus ruled energy because it's in Taurus. So, you know, some of you may be like really obsessed with something pertaining to your home you know, like feeling like you have to have money to get that thing. Otherwise you're going to die without it. And you're not telling your significant other or anybody else in your life about the money that it costs. And you're like trying to swing it behind the scenes or whatever it is. And you're trying to control things. And, you know, because if I get that thing, I'm going to feel better. And if I get this thing, I'm going to feel better. And, you know, and it's in the sign of, you know, it's Leo and Leo is very grand and it's like very ego based. It's very like, this is my castle. This is the way I need things, you know? So we have to be careful of not being like that kind of energy like the last two weeks we really do we have to be because the energy's there like could so totally have it and you want to make sure you're not like that with your kids you want to make sure that you're not like that having to do with any kind of possession especially this month because you know when it comes to money right which of course is very connected to money when it comes to money the second half of this month is excellent for investment and savings and investing in ourselves or investing in things um 
investing in our children, investing in um, anything that's going to bring us a yield. So a self-help book, a self-help program, therapy, the gym, um, anything that's going to help you understand yourself better, astrology reading, um, you know, guided meditation, whatever, okay, any whatever, anything like that, or anything having to do with a business, a, mo um, a monetizable talent, creative endeavor, let anything like that, very good energy to put money into. Not a good money to sp like for spending frivolously on clothes and shoes and blah, blah, blah. And we could feel like we want to do those things. You know, the spring's coming and it's fifth house. We want to be cute, whatever. Let it go for another few weeks, okay? Let like, um, when is... I mean, for you guys, I feel like I would just give it like a three-week hiatus. Just pull back on the spending a little bit. Just get your have-tos and make a list of the wants for closer towards the end of uh, April, okay? Uh, it'll be a lot better for you at that point, for sure, okay? Um, anything else I wanted to discuss um, Palace Athena going retrograde in your 12th house, telling you a lot of stuff's going to be coming back from the past, old memories of things that need to be healed. A lot of you might be feeling this already just with Palace in the 12th can generally do that. Um, a lot of information in your dreams, pay attention to your dreams. I've been having some really weird dreams, very prophetic dreams. I had two very prophetic dreams this week. So make sure you get up and write them down or tell somebody who you trust, um, but things from the past are going to be coming back. It's very karmic energy, very karmic month. Um, but, you know, but it, because it's in your 12th house, for you, I feel like it's going to be a lot about, you're going to be looking at how you've ended things in the past, how you've shown up in certain situations in the past, how you really want to work towards changing to be a better version of yourself. Because Palace is very connected to wisdom. She's very connected to, especially when she's retrograde, She's very, um, especially in a, in a Sagittarius, very connected to self-awareness and self-growth and, you know, what's coming up that needs to be looked at. So such a good time for therapy or just a really good self-analysis and self-reflection. Um, really, I, I just, I feel like for, for you guys, that is going to be a good energy, um, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much it. I think that's everything I wanted to cover on the eclipse. Um, so I hope this is helpful in some way, guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hi, Aquarius. So I feel like even at this reading, like March 8th, I just feel like a lot of you had a very intense February. You know, it was like busy, weird stuff coming up. And now everything is sort of going to shift. You're going to have um, a much better chance um, to get a lot, a lot more uh, squared away with your finances, uh, opportunities could be coming around that could be helpful with your finances. This prepares you to use the energy of the eclipse to see your life from a very, very different perspective. Because you guys do feel the shift coming, right? I mean, it's because we have a little girl Pluto in in this house, but the eclipse is happening in the ninth house of truth, of uh, growth, of expansion, higher education, higher mindedness. Um, uh, marketing, advertising, importing, exporting, travel, the law, legalities, local governance, politics. There's a lot going on there, right? Now this eclipse, eclipses something out, brings something in, and there is going to be some message coming in because it is working with Mercury. So Mercury is this energy in Aries. It, it It's conjunct Aries. I'm going to speak about that in a moment, but it's, it's a message-driven eclipse so something gets eclipsed out and we get some sort of message in and that message in is going to be opposing us. So it's something that we're going to have to be dealing with that's going to be shifting us in a new direction because it's in Aries. Aries is about fresh path, new perspective in the third house of communication. So this is a very clear message that's coming in. Some of you may be realizing, right, because the third house is very connected to the mental realm and what's on your mind. So some of you may be realizing that you know, you don't really love your job and you want to move, uh, you know, move into a different space. Maybe you want to go back to school. Maybe you want to get into studying um, law, legalities, politics, religion, 
um, maybe you want to teach in higher education or some sort of, uh, you know, um, higher minded field, or you want to get into teaching some sort of higher minded workshops. You want to create some sort of curriculum. It's very, there's an energy that's very connected to like communicating, writing, getting out there, right. Getting in front of people. Um, but again, something getting eclipsed out for something to get eclipsed in, there could be a change in your work ar ar arrangements. There could be some sort of message coming in having to do with father energy, um, giving you all of, or a message about an extended family member as well. So again, this idea of eclipsed out, something gets eclipsed in, a message coming in. Now, this eclipse is also quincunxing Saturn in Pisces, which is in the second house. So second house has to do with um, your money that you make from the work that you do, your sense of self, your self-esteem. Saturn is very much about being responsible, grounded, and solid in the very watery um, and bottomless sign of very giving and loving Pisces, right? So that you... you Someone could need you in their life right now as a support, and it's not the easiest thing for you to swing. If that makes sense, you may not be in total agreement with the house. Something is rolling out. They could be discordant energy with somebody, but yet they need your help. Or they need your assistance in a way, but yet there's something uncomfortable about it for you. And this could be right around this eclipse energy. It's like, you're going to be thinking like, why are you doing this? Why is this happening? Why is this happening this way? This kind of energy. Um, but you have to expect that, you know, this, there's going to be some sort of like, um, you know, it's because it's really the way that it's, it's active, the way that Pluto's activated, it really could be in any, really any part of your life. But one thing is you're going to be gaining some insight um, that, you're realizing that whatever's happening in this energy is instigating a need for change. And, and now is the time. This is about seeking um, a collaboration with like-minded individuals, um, you know, making some phone calls, putting the feelers out for people in an industry that you want to transition into, feelers um, when it comes to connecting even back to people, back to people right here, guys, back to people from your past, who were old, maybe colleagues or people who you just connect with. Pallas Athena in Sag is a very good energy for harnessing a lot of um, connections, but she's going to be on March 29th. She's going to be on retrograde in the Sagittarius energy. So doings and things, circumstances and people from the past could be coming back around in that 11th house. So old friends, people you used to work with, ideas and opportunities from the past. And it's just like suddenly like connecting with people from the past. And this is the best thing that can happen because that kind of networking can be so very powerful for you as you move forward. And again, it is about, it's very connected to this idea of like-minded individuals. So people, who share the same philosophies as you, whether it has to do with um, just the process of life, politics, religion, whatever it is, whatever is the most the the, the largest driving force, and whatever it is, it there's got to be this um, connection to like minded energy um, around this eclipse time. Okay, so it's very important for you guys to understand. Now, while the eclipse is happening in that ninth house, it is opposing that Aries energy in the third. So we do have Aries is going to be at 24 degrees is conjuncting Mercury. And now Aries is the goddess of strife and discord. And in the third house, you can be communicating this, you could be thinking this, it's in the sign of Aries, which is a fiery energy. So there can be some discordant communication when it comes to really it's opposing Libra. So with your children, with your significant other, having to do with a boss, some sort of situation about process when it comes to a boss or a situation in the work environment. And it's like that energy is what's making you realize that something's got to change, right? Aries is there for a reason and it is conjunct Mercury at 24 degrees for a reason. Number 24 factors down to a six, which is about moving away from tech toxicity, something that just is not aligned with you. Now, we also have Vulcan retrograde at 11 degrees in Aries. So this is very connected to the power that you have to break down into a crystallized manner 
something that needs to be broken down and go so that something new can take its place. Now, that is absolutely like, it's, it's very connected to an eclipse energy, obviously, but this is happening in this third house. So for some of you, you may be realizing it's time for you to just change your mindset. It's time for you to change your zip code. It's time for you to change your friends. It's time for you to change the way in which you're viewing your life moving forward. Something is coming in that's putting you on a new path. And it's that new path that you're just going to feel a lot more at home on. That's not to say that that path is going to manifest overnight, but it's going to begin now. You're going to start realizing this is what I need to do. I need to contact these people. I need to go back to school. I need to create this thing in my life that's going to you know, manifest this, this circumstance that I really wish to, to have in my life, right? So that's why, I mean, that eclipse right there is going to be very powerful. Now, it is also squaring your sixth house in with the sign of Cancer. We have Kronos, Hades, and Estrella all are going to be squaring in this energy. Now, again, None of these things are negative. None of it's not negative. It's not positive about it. It just is. But this is more support for the idea of change. It's very necessary. Let me just take a sip of water here. You guys are the 11th sign. So my throat is going away. But let's talk about Kronos first. This is Kronos is retrograde. And he's very, this is the thing. Kronos is very connected to this idea of mastery, leadership, bureaucracy, rules, authority, not agreeing. And in that sixth house, you may not agree with your colleagues. You may not agree with the way something is going on with one of your pets. You may not agree with how things are going in the day-to-day -day of splitting responsibilities. That's very real. But because Kronos is retrograde, you have to take that idea and then you have to go within and then you have to look at your own bureaucratic red tape that you've developed within yourself that's part of your, your negative to false narrative, right? Your, your, any sort of negative talk, any sort of like, I have to be able to take the bull by the horns and master myself and represent myself as an authority and handle the differing of opinions differently and deal with this bureaucratic red tape within myself in order to move forward. So there is some sort of negative self-talk. Maybe you have imposter syndrome. Maybe you're just not feeling very confident in, wh in what it is that you're in. Whatever it is, it's like this bureaucratic red tape of your own within yourself has to be broken before you can deal with the bureaucratic red tape properly in the way that you need to, having to do with your colleagues, your day-to-day -day work environment, it's a situation going on with your health, whatever it is. Because this is another thing, having these energies, having this portal in your sixth house, you have to knock it out of, you have to get out of your own way when it comes to, you know, taking really good care of your health and not using 12 teen excuses to not take better care of your health right now. Now, we also have Estrella. So Estrella is at seven degrees in cancer. Now, this is um, direct. Um, it's, it's, Estrella is a transneptunian planet, but it represents this idea of, um, of, um, I'm sorry, Hades is a transitudian. Um, Astraea represents the inability of letting go. And she really does point to blockages, right? Where we, we don't realize how being really dug in to thinking that something has to be a certain way, how it ends up, it, it ends up hindering us and serving as an energetic block, right? Because it blocks us from seeing when something is over and finished, right? It's like time for something new to begin. And I do feel like a lot of you kind of know that, right? When it comes to that job situation or when it comes to how it is that you've been taking care of your health, maybe a little bit of both, right? Could certainly be that where it's like, I, I can't keep doing that, right? But Australia is like, I can't let go. I have a blockage. I just can't get out of my own way. I have analysis paralysis. I'm not sure what to do. And then we have in the middle, Hades. And I understand Hades in this particular portal represents deterioration, where it's like every day that you continue 
on this path, it's breaking you down a little bit more. It's challenging your health a little bit more. It's, it's breaking your soul down a little bit more each day when it comes to how, how that work situation is going. Like, you know, something has got to change, but you are having a very hard time letting go of it at this point. But right now it's enough to understand that something needs to change here, figure out what it is, and then start being proactive in that space. Even if it's just about gaining information, you know, if it has to do with work, getting into a new, uh, a new um, employment position, um, if it has to do with your health, really reformulating your to-do list on the day-to-day, -day, prioritizing differently and making yourself more of a priority when it comes to how it is that you are taking care of yourself and the foods that you eat. You don't let something run amok here, right? You do want to be um, a little bit careful with these three cats working together here in the sixth house. We do want to be a little bit careful there. Now, we also have Sedna 29 of the 29th degrees, the anoretic degree in the sign of Taurus. And so this is where you could feel power, uh, powerless, right? Uh, fourth house energy, your emotional stability, emotional security, um, you might be feeling powerless because maybe you work from home and you feel like you can't not work from home, or there could be some sort of powerless energy where you feel powerless over a family situation, or you feel very powerless over your ability to create emotional stability for yourself. Whatever it is, it's not real, right? Because when she's here, you feel powerless, but she also shows you where you can overcome those feelings and play your own part in making adjustments to your experience in your life right now to bring yourself the very stability that it is that you need, right? You're not powerless when it comes to that family situation. You're not powerless when it comes to that work situation at home or that situation having to do with the property, real estate, or at home. It's a matter of changing your perspective, right? And if you feel powerless, you have to understand that's because you're giving your power away to someone else. You are not powerless. If you harness your power, do you understand, right? We too often give our power away to people who will abuse that. And then we feel like, well, I can't change the situation. They're being stubborn. They're the... Let them be stubborn and difficult and whatever they want to be all on their own. Take your power back and figure out your next moves. And just trust in the fact that if you love this person, even if it's from across the street, that things will come back around, but it's about protecting your energies. This month, it is about protecting energies. Okay, guys? So really important there. And the last thing I want to mention is Pallas Athena. is going to be retrograde starting on March 29th in your 11th house of goals and gains. So things coming back from the past, as I mentioned before. Again, old friends, old connections, old things that you wanted to do. But I like this energy. This is very focused on self-awareness and self-growth. So I think overall... Um, that is it. I hope this was helpful in some way. Thank you so much for joining me, Aquarius, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Hi, please. I hope you guys are doing great. Welcome, welcome to your full moon lunar eclipse in Libra energy. So you are having the full moon lunar eclipse. It's a reading, not the energy, but the energy of the full moon uh, lunar eclipse is happening on March 25th at three o'clock in the morning. And it's happening in your eighth house of endings and beginnings, change and transformation, other people's money, debt, taxes, investments, insurance payouts, inheritances, divorce settlements, um, the idea of divorce, um, pregnancy, careful with that eclipse with pregnancy, um, but it's a very, it's in a very controlling house, right? Because the eighth house landlord is Scorpio and Scorpio is like fixed water, right? And it has, you know, that air energy in it, right? So there could be, um, first of all, some sort of message is going to be coming in, right? Because Mercury is in the sign of Aquarius, of uh, Aries. And so Aries uh, opposing the Libra energy. If you see here in the second house, 24 degrees, it is conjunct Aries. I'm going to, I'll I'll interpret that in a moment, but Mercury is very involved in this eclipse, which typically indicates a message coming in. Um, and it's a message that you're going to have to deal up, do something with. You're going to have to do something with it, if that makes sense. Now, 
the eclipse is going to be quincunxing Saturn in your sign in the first house. And Saturn is very much about responsibility and, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, slow and steady wins the race kind of thing. It's in your first house of your path, the path that you're on. So this eclipse is going to bring some information that is going to shift your path, at least, and you know, initially it's going to happen. It's going to shift your path over the next at least six months here. Um, and I, I don't feel like this is a bad thing for you at all, because I feel like a lot of you have been contemplating making a change for a while. Um, but, it, you know, that change can't really happen until you deal with those inner roadblocks that you, that, that have been keeping you from being the, the person that you feel you truly are, right? So there's been a lack of authenticity, you know, in your energy. And this eclipse is going to bring that out into the open for you guys, you know, and I don't consider that a bad thing. But during this time, you may feel, um, you know, pretty compelled to <sighs> compare yourself to others. And remember, comparison is the thief, the thief of happiness, so you could be feel like you're comparing yourself to others, you know, um, you know, engage in, engage in very destructive self-talk, you know, and a lot of that can happen because of this Aries energy in the house of self-worth. Because look at what we have here. We, you have to be careful of this, right? Because we have a couple of energies here that we need to talk about. So we have um, this, we have Vulcan, but first let's talk about um, the Aries energy. So Aries energy is going to be, is, um, conjuncting mercury at 24 degrees and she's the goddess of strife and discord especially in the, when it's at that conjunction with mercury especially at, at 24 degrees because 24 factors down to a six which in numer numerology is about leaving this and like being able to leave toxicity leave something that's toxic right but Eris is the goddess of strife and discord and when it's conjunct mercury in the second house it's like you are thinking right? What's on your mind? This very like discordant energy when it comes to your money and your sense of self and, you know, who you are and what you're all about. You're not feeling good about yourself here. You're not, especially because it's, it's also working with Carmen and Aries, which could be a compromised sense of self, but we have Vulcan sandwiched between the sun and the north node. So this Vulcan energy represents the power to smash or break down something that needs to be smashed and broken down, right? In that area of your life. It, so when it comes to how it is that you deal with your money, when it comes to the, your, your energy, when it comes to your sense of self, or and also when it comes to how it is that you treat your own body. So you're not treating your body with care and respect. Is there some sort of addiction being nursed? Are you not eating? The, the best food? Are you not feeling good about your sense of self? Are you struggling with anxiety or depression? How is this manifesting for you? I'm really getting in touch with that, you know, because it, it, it's this idea of something needs to be broken down in order to be rebuilt. And look at you have such good energy here to actually do this because it's it's sandwiched between it's a Vulcan sandwich with the moon, the, the sun is the top bread and the, and the North node is the bottom bread. So it's time for like new and novel, but you know, like what is that ultimately meaning for you? Right. Because a lot of you have been in this space where you haven't been able to actually crystallize what that actually means for you. So you don't want to avoid this because if you avoid this, it's going to set you back and um, even more especially this month. This is not a month to escape. This is not a month to say, oh no, not me. I am like, you know, and, and I say this tongue in cheek, guys. I hope you know. I'm just, I mean, I'm just having fun here, but it's like, I love everyone. I don't do anything wrong. I'm always honest. I'm just a loving, open, giving person. And everybody else is the problem. What do other people just find me who are messy? All that might be true. Get over it now, okay? It's time to get serious with yourself. I don't, you know, guys, I usually treat you guys very kind because I love you. I have, I love my Pisces friends and family, a lot of Pisces clients. I love you guys. But will you look at all the energies in your first house? Look at all that. Mars, if you are an ascendant, you're ascendant. If you're a Pisces sun, then you're sun. If you're a Pisces moon, then you're moon. But you also have Saturn. You have Venus. You have Neptune. You have Aegea. 
There is a lot of energy that wants to push you forward. So if you're not allowing yourself to push you forward with everybody saying, come on, come this way, you know, we have, you, part of the human condition is choice. So if you want to choose to stay where you are right now, fine. But you have to understand that that is a choice, an energetic choice that you're making because your astrology looks different. Now, I don't know what your inner, your outer circle would look like. Okay. I don't know what that would be, right? Like usually in readings, like if this was your birth chart, this would be your outer, the outer transiting energies. So I don't know, like actually it would be what's your inner circle, right? What is your birth chart and how are these speaking to your, your own particular energies? But I can tell you that as far as the Pisces archetype goes, this is a, a time for, um, for change and, and whether you are one, you know, of, of um, uh, uh, one of uh, a Pisces who is is very cautious during this time or, or not, if this energy is meant to kind of project you right into a next space, um, this is definitely connected to following your intuition, li listening to your higher self, especially, you know, with this pals Athena in the 10th house and she's going retrograde on the 29th. So a lot of things are going to be coming back um, in that 10th house having to do with just everything from your life, honestly, career situations, relationship situations, circumstances connected to your first family, all of these things are going to be coming up for you to look at. Some of you might literally be hearing from people from your past because doings, things, circumstances, things from the past are going to be coming back. And because this is a very karmic time period, something can come back that's very karmically driven, right? So you could hear from somebody from the past, from somebody from that job or some sort of situation, um, a person from your family, you know, anything like that um, can certainly be happening. Now, I do want to also mention that this Libra energy in the eighth house is squaring Cancer in the fifth. So the fifth house has to do with falling in love, love affairs, romance, monetizable talents, entrepreneurial efforts, um, your joy, your happiness, vacations, things that are light, fun, the, the inner child in you, right? And right now it's got a couple of heavy energies who really just need to sort of work through this portal, um, especially for the next six months. So we have this Kronos energy in here. And so Kronos represents, it's, it's, it's retrograde. So Kronos itself represents like authority, leadership, mastery, discipline, bureaucracy, um, difference of opinions. So you could certainly in the sign of cancer, so there could be some discordant energy having to do maybe with your children, your family, your first family, like discordant energies there. Okay, fine. But because Kronos is retrograde, it does indicate that you really need to look within to see where are you getting in your own way when it comes to your ability to feel like you have authority over your own life, where you are not nursing your own bureaucratic red tape when it comes to um, negative self-talk within yourself. So are you feeling, are you saying like, I'm a horrible daughter, I'm a horrible mother, I'm a horrible person to be in relationships with, you know, I'm, and you know, be, you might not be saying this, but you might be feeling this on a soul level. Um, even though you know you're not, and even though, and you could write out all of the wonderful things that you do, but yet you're feeling this way, right? And that, you know, so that's, so Kronos, okay, Kronos retrograde. Now we have Estrella. Estrella is, is, is represents the inability to let go of things. And it points to blockages that stop us from seeing when something is over, it's done, it's ready, it's time for something new. And we have Hades in the middle, which for this particular portal, I understand is representing the idea of disintegration. Something is breaking you down one at a time. Something is breaking down, okay? So we have Kronos, this idea of bureaucracy and red tape. We have astray, which has to do with something that you're just having a really hard time letting go of. So it's like the, it's those, it's like the idea of like control and inability of letting go with this idea of disintegration, okay? So those three energies together, you're like, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with that? Well, the thing is this, all of those energy, it's just like something needs to be handled in a different way there. 
So there needs to be a change in your lens, a change in the way that you're handling something. Now, I want to sort of I want to speak to another energy that might be helpful here, which is Sedna, which is a 29 degrees in the sign of Taurus in the third house. So 29 degrees, critical degree, anoretic degree, it's it's the manifest, the negative manifestation, shadow manifestation of Taurus, as well as the landlord of the third house, which is Gemini. So there could be um some sort of like arguments about money and you know um uh, body maintenance and how somebody is taking care of themselves or how you're taking care of yourself. And it's like, I feel powerless against that. So you may be looking at somebody in your life or you may be looking at your own life where it's like, I know this is, this is not good, but I am powerless against it. And no, you're not. That's the thing. That is one positioning. Sedna at 29, usually it's a trippy energy when things are at 29 degrees because it's a shadow manifestation there. Especially in the, third, in the third house, it could be two-faced energies. It could be gossip. It could be negative arguments. So what? Rise above all of that because here you are feeling hopeless and I can't make change. And every time I try to speak to this person, it goes south and I don't know what to do about it. And it's like, she shows you where you can overcome these feelings and play a part in making adjustments in your own responses. Don't be reactive, be responsive. And how to bring the stability that you need to that part of your life in the realm of communication, in the realm of how it is that you think about yourself and others. It's a grounding energy right? It's this idea of getting in front of this idea of feeling powerless. No, you are not. You just need to think differently. And you know what, guys? There's nothing wrong with loving that family member, that sibling, that extended family member, whoever it is from across the street, because they might be going through something right now that they need to go through right now. And that's part of their journey. And that you need to love them from across the street. You don't need to get sucked up into their drama. You don't need to. They may need to go through that process, okay? So this is all energy that is going to be manifesting. I do want to say a little heads up with money. Second half of the month, great energy for investing, investing in yourself. Um, I do like those energies for you, um, but not frivolous. Watch your wallet. Make sure that you just know what's going out. Great for investing in money. Anything that's going to yield a return, no matter how small it is, investing in yourself, yielding a return there, therapy, a gym, self-help situation, um, that webinar or seminar, whatever it is, getting an astrology reading, getting a Reiki session, guided meditation, whatever it is that you might feel called to do, the investment in those things, good the investment in anything that's financial that could bring a financial gain, good, but definitely not a good time for the next like three weeks or so after this eclipse for being a spendthrift. So just be mindful of that. Okay, guys, I hope that was helpful in some way. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.